This word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn. It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead. <laughs> Heartthrob, Superman to millions. He's patriotic, smart, kind, and very generous. Maybe too generous. He's recently made friends with Gabe El Taib, co creator of the amazing new comic Truth, Justice, American Way. Dean has put his full throated support behind this book. Or has he? Okay, this is the last thing, and I will get you the heck out of here. Do you think people should buy right now? Should they click the link and buy Truth, Justice, American Way? And why is it the greatest comic book ever? Why do you think that? Well, they should buy it for sure, without a doubt. Right now, click it, go. I'm going to do it after this is over. Um, like, so if I did it now, I think weird things would happen. Um, <laughs> and they should do it because Gabe is a big man and he physically threatened me. Physically threatened me. Physically. If I didn't say this, that's right. That he was going to, to <laughs> choke me out and teach me what truth, justice, and the American way is all about. Right. So, <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I love it that it's counterculture and it's counterculture just being patriotic and and standing for all the things that I stand for. Uh, so well, I, I can't you. wait. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So, what's the truth about Gabe El Taib? Madman, artist, poet gentle lover it doesn't matter buy the book or dean kane gets it wednesday june 6 my camera it's gonna focus sooner or later guys i don't know what to tell you um it is me your friend gabe out there what the hell's going on here uh it is a double impact 
double impact. Uh, take your black silk underwear and go back to Disneyland. Uh, this is a good one, guys. This is my favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme was very special to me in this channel. It's how Sean, uh, he saw me on Comic State Kings with the Van Damme background. And he said, who is this brother from another mother? This movie, uh, this is the movie that sparked my love for this stuff. I love Kickboxer. I love Bloodsport. But there's something about Double Impact that I just love so much. It's, I think it's Van Damme's best. What say you, my friend? Um, tonight, you're, you are Chad to my Alex. How are you, friend? I am doing great. I want to uh, congratulate you on uh, our victory this past night in the uh, tag team uh, wrestling match mm, that that's right. we were unaware we were participating in. And it was, it was great, but yeah, this is my favorite Van Damme movie. I have watched it more times than any Van Damme movie. I have it pretty well committed to memory. And uh, one of my first movie crushes was of oh. course the actress in this. Love it. Now, Love it. Lo now is it the character Danielle or are we talking about Corey Everson? To me, Danielle Corey would have been uh, my type, I must say. Okay. Uh, okay. The uh, Danielle is, uh, uh, oh my goodness, my stars. Yes. Uh, yeah. She's I, an amazing I, lady. Uh, Danielle's beautiful, but I love brunettes and I love a woman mm. with a nose. Mm. Corey Everson has both. Now, I don't like overly muscular women, but I will. I will allow Make an it exception. Like a, a, seven time, a seven time Miss Olympia, Corey Everson, who to yeah. me is an absolute vision of beauty. So, uh, yeah, she plays funny, right because this is a great we we love Van Damme, we've got double the Van Damage, right? And hail chat, right. by the way, hail to the chat. Right. Um, but at the same time, we had a great supporting cast in this movie, actually, an outstanding supporting cast in this movie, and that's the right. thing that really is, is incredible to me. The, the rogues gallery in this were all fantastic, first right. rate, you know, yeah. as, as were the supporting actors, Frankie. Uh, was uh, incredible in this and, uh, of course, had a long acting career, was a great character actor in this and was in Salem's Lot, another one of my favorite movies. But, yeah, so great. Yeah, he, he's all over the place, uh, the gentleman that played Frankie. I saw him on Little House on the Prairie last year. Yes. Uh, he was in yep. all kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, it's great. We'll get into it in just a minute. Let me share mm -hmm. this. We'll catch up on uh, how was your weekend We'll let him, and we'll let the people come in. But there is Corey there Everson. Go. With Van Damme, right around the time, obviously, there's probably a production still or something. And she yep. plays one of the bad guys in this. And I don't know. I, I love a woman with the nose. And she's typical, She's a brunette in this movie. In that photo yes. there, she's sort of a redhead. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Corey Everson. You know, so. Uh, yeah. A little, little strong looking. Sure. It was the 80s. The big hair. It's a 1980s thing. So. Yeah, it was yeah. the time of California girls posters and that whole thing. It is what it is. Absolutely. That is right there, man. That's the poster. Right. So real quick, before we jump in, I love this movie so much. Your weekend, your 4th of July, how did you celebrate America? It was great. So uh, my daughter is on the uh, the high school dance team. So she marched in the Bristol 4th of July parade, which is the longest running, continually running 4th of July parade in the United States of America. And it wow. happens on this street. So she marched in the parade and my wife, of course, was there to assist, you know, to give the gals uh, water bottles because they marched with the band. And uh, sure. yeah, it was great, man. That and, is some um, deep, deep, deep heritage here. Yeah, so, I love this country and I love this town. Great town. Right. Yeah, I was uh, telling you before the show, I was in Las Vegas all weekend. Yeah, man. Uh, for UFC 276. I took my nice. son, he's 23, my nephew, Aiden, he's 18. And uh, he's just the biggest UFC fan. We're all huge fans. So uh, it was a great time at the fights and then hanging around Vegas all weekend. Uh, I may or may not have made a little money on the roulette table. Not mm -hmm. really a gambler, but I got a system, Sean. I got a system on how to beat the house. No, just kidding. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this. I, wanted, I want to get to reading these comments in the chat and saying hello to everybody. Before I do, when you were on the roulette table, when yes. you were done, did you grab a tumbler crush it in your hands, or take a drink from it, crush it in your hands and throw it? <laughs> right. Right. That was the coolest sequence ever, man. I, I love that. There's so many lines in this movie that me and my best friend Merlin, I met him mm -hmm. in fourth grade, and that's where I would watch Van Damme movies at his house on Friday nights, yeah. starting around fifth or sixth grade. And this was one of the main ones we would watch over and over. And there's the great line where Raymond Zang says, there's two of them. 
You know what I mean? Or uh, Bolo Young, who plays Moon. He's the big bad in this, you know, for the bad guys. He was in, uh, I think he was in Enter the Dragon, right? He was in a few Bruce Lee films. Yeah. Uh, he usually has one or two lines in a Van Damme movie because he cannot speak English. And, uh, yes. oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll get to his line, but we say it to each other all the time. I think he has one yeah, line. Enter the Dragon and uh, in Bloodsport. I mean, it's it was them reuniting for the first time since Bloodsport, which was so cool. Right, right. Yeah, he played Chong Lee. And, yeah, uh, Chong in, Lee, that's right. And in, in Beef Law, my comic about twin brothers in Hong Kong, we feature Victoria Harbor prominently, which this mm. movie opens with Victoria Harbor. Boom. Oh, gosh. Brothers. So th this is a... Beef Law, the comic I'm working on after Truth Justice, I'm already drawing it. It's a love letter to this movie, to all of these yeah. Steven Seagal Van Damme movies, but it has a lot of stuff from this. And the guy he opens up fighting with, Chung Chi Hua, he's named sort of in honor of Chung Lee from Bloodsport, who is Moon yeah. in this movie, who is, his name is right there on the screen, Bolo Young, the great actor. Uh -huh. So absolutely love this movie. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's just get into it. You know, so we set the stage here. We're in British-controlled Hong Kong, Victoria mm -hmm. Harbor. Millions and millions of people live in here. And there's a uh, ceremony for a new uh, new harbor tunnel that's opening up. And Van Damme's father is one of the men responsible for it. And he's being, yep. you know, they're going to honor him. They're going to cut the ribbon. And he's going to collect dividends for years on this thing. They never explain how that works, but it's going to pay him out. And he's got a business partner right there. The man on the left is Griffith. The man on the right is Van Damme's father. The man in the, with the mustache on the far right, that's Frankie. He's like Van uh -huh. Damme, the two Van Dams, they're twin brothers. Um, he's like the dad's right hand. He's like his bodyguard and all that because he's a British. I don't remember if he's like a governor or uh, uh -huh. what his official position is, but he's a British leader of Hong Kong. You know what yes. I mean? And Frankie's like his bodyguard. You know, he's actually armed and all that. Oh, wait, here comes Hunch with the super chat. Let's see what he's got here. Hell. All right, Hunch and Dirty Ripper. In regards to my question from last week, found a copy at a half price books of the Russian Criminal Tattoo Encyclopedia, Volume One by Fuel Magazine. Hunch, you'll be happy to know I added some Russian tattoos to uh, nice. Sergey, Sergey, our big bad in my Victoria Harbor, Hong Kong, 1994 uh, martial arts action epic beef law. So I did go and research Russian tattoos, and I added some on him. He's got a knife here. Right. He's got a Dude. tiger wearing a commando hat on his chest, and he's got like an airborne skull that says CCP on it, has lightning on it. So, oh, yeah. dude. It's going to be awesome, man. And it's so funny. In the chat I was reading, uh, Mike Fan of Double Impact has just been going down all with all the list of all these actors. Uh, and and it's like, it's amazing. You know, talking about Jeffrey Lewis, who played, um, you know, Frankie, and talking about, um, you know, Griffith, played by the great Alan Scarf. And then uh, it's it's there's there were so many amazing people in this stuff. And then the one comment that really uh, hit me was um, happier times in Hong Kong, much happier times. And I was thinking, yes, I'm so glad we got those evil colonial British out of Hong Kong. Right. You know, yeah. uh, things are going go. great for them. But uh, Hunch, yep. you'll be happy to know, um, I found that tiger with the commando <sighs> hat. I found that online. I gave him a, a dagger on his left arm. I gave him this airborne, uh, I don't know, it would be the equivalent of airborne rangers, skull on the other arm. I might tat him up a little bit more, um, but, you know, he's going to be wearing clothes a lot of the book. So uh, maybe he needs a few more tattoos. I don't know. But uh, we'll definitely work on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Hail so it, There you go. So, uh, there's a funny thing. Sheldon Lenich, he's a writer and movie producer. He wrote, mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest movie he ever did was Rambo 3. But he's yes. like in Van Damme's heyday. He was Van Damme's right hand. Like, they were peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. He wrote and sometimes directed. And uh, so many of the movies Van Damme was in, Sheldon Lenich. And if you go to the YouTube channel, Viking Samurai, last yeah. year he interviewed Sheldon for a few hours and cut it up into, like, 10 or 20, like, short YouTube videos. And Sheldon just talks about all the stuff, the behind the scenes with Van Damme on Bloodsport and Kickboxer and Cyborg and all that. Mm -hmm. And Sheldon talks about doing this movie here and talking to, I think it's pronounced... Menachem Gohan. He was one of the yes. two brothers that owned Canon Films. And he didn't like the idea of Van Damme playing twin brothers. And and the quote Sheldon said was, Van Damme can't even play one character. How's he supposed to play two? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell Poor you, though. Yeah, it, that's, I will tell you this, man. 
the the thing that I will say about him, and even even my wife said that, not having grown up with Van Dam, right. uh, you know, and and all of that kind of stuff. She goes, you know, he's actually a pretty darn good actor. I you think know? so. And I'm biased. I think he's completely. solid. No, I th- I think he's solid. I mean, um, because you know, there's been a lot of conversations about um this past week actually, um you know, how action stars struggling to get into more dramatic roles and how tough that is. And I think, you know, he's done a solid job. When he has a decent script, he knows what he needs to do in it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Jonathan Waffles, hail. Right. Yeah, he was saying that uh, Russian mob and Tats go together like the Mafia and Cannoli or Jonathan (laughs) Waffles. Jonathan Waffles. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Pancake? I've asked you this, I don't remember. Pancake, French toast, or Waffles? You have to pick one. You cannot say all three. Oh, oh, I'll say Waffles. And I will say, really? um, it's kind of my brand. Uh, now, <laughs> now, do you want your do you want your waffles puffy, or do you want them crispy with a puffy inside? Oh my god, dude! What are you doing to me? Um, oh my lord, that's a really good question. I'd have I to like do a taste crispy. test, man. I like mine crispy. I'd have to do a taste test because, see, here's my thing. Okay. So, you know, um, my, my ideal any kind of flour with syrup is uh, New Mexico-style sopapillas. I don't oh. know if you like those or not. Oh, oh I if, love them. My grandma would make them in a Mexican restaurant all the time. Yeah. New Mexico-style sopapillas. Um, our friend who owns or uh, who used to own the Mexican restaurant up the, up the street, now he's got another one he's doing, uh, but a great guy, Frank, uh, he ordered some special for me. Uh, and, uh, cause he's from New Mexico. So he knew what I was talking about, you know, okay. Rhode Island people don't know, but man, when you, when you bring up syrup, that's my first thought. And can I say that the, the person that they cast to be Van Damme's dad in this looked like he could be Van Damme's dad. <laughs> right, right, right. I thought he was a pretty good casting, man. Oh, that's funny. That's right. Yeah. I, I see. Yeah. I, I kind of see it there. They have that similar mouth with those mm-hmm. lines on their cheeks from their smile. But yep. um, let's see, really quick. Uh, 130 room puffy, so you could turn it Ooh. into a breakfast sandwich. He goes Dang, with the puffy man, you guys raised the game. I like pancakes best. That's where I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I put a poll in the chat: pancake, oh, waffle, nice. French toast. So we'll see. We'll see what wins there. So anyway, um, they, we'll, we'll kind of hurry through this. Uh, this opening part. They cut the bridge. They're headed yep. home, you know, and they got the nanny with the two babies in the back. Frankie is telling them, "Oh, great job! Everything was great." Realize they're being followed, and then Moon is the character played by the great Bolo Young, Chong Lee yes. in the Blood Sport, Enter the Dragon. He's there fighting Bruce Lee, one of the great Hong Kong martial artists. Um, mm. This this part right here, the mom is bleeding to death on the ground, and me and my buddy in sixth grade would always impersonate him. She's like, "What will happen to my babies?" Because the assassins from Raymond mm-hmm. Chang, who's going to be the big Chinese Hong Kong gangster, they kill the mom and they kill the dad. Um, they kill they kill these two. And she's like, what will happen to my baby? And he forces out, you will never know. So, yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's up there with his, uh, yeah, with his, doesn't he say, and I, I, I was very honest, I think it was Japanese, but what, or what does he say? Was it Japanese? Does he say sayonara? Does he say something else when he shoots uh, Frankie, when Frankie's trying to escape, I'll never forget. He says something. You know, I, you know, I can't make out most of what this guy says. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is. It's sad because yeah. he has like three or four lines per movie. <laughs> this is where Wagner should have zigged instead of getting zanged. That's that's rough, man. Right, 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 right. dude. Yeah, yeah this. Th- I will tell you this though. They do set up Frankie to be a little bit of a badass because he pulls up in his red sports car, firing from the car. Right. You right. know. Yeah. And and I will say this too is that um, they for action movies they did make the because I 1991 I was already old enough you know to to have a little bit of taste in movies and seen some things and I have to tell you they they really did make it a gut wrenching death for the parents oh yeah they you know? just straight up murder you know and you get dad- three minutes with them joking about. He's like, oh, I got you. Uh, I uh, go look in the glove box. I got you a present in that box of cigars that's going to come back uh, later, right. uh, with his initials on it. He's like, oh, it's great, Frank. It's cheap, and there's no like they they have this great banter back and forth, and you really could believe, you know, that they had this history with only five minutes of screen time together. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. nice. They 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 establish that brotherhood between Wagner and Frankie. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I caught it a little bit here where uh, 
you know, you yeah. can see a little bit of a smirk. He's covering his mouth. Yeah. But you see it in the fold right there that they're kind of joking back and forth because Frankie yeah, got yeah. him that gift and stuff. So, uh, so anyway, he escapes with one of the babies and one gets dropped off at a French orphanage. That's how mm-hmm. they, that's how they explain his, uh, French accent. It's a yep. orphanage in Hong Kong. That's French nuns. And then Frankie takes the other Van Dam, the two twins. He mm-hmm. takes him to France to go live yes. there for a while, even though Frankie's like American. I don't understand that, but that's how they explain away the, the French. Yes. Accent. You know, they always have to do that. Cause you know, back then they Dam. cared. <laughs> they cared yeah. to actually explain it, you know? Right. Hold on, time out. Why do we always talk about food on this show with such love? God, it's quick Hunch today. Hunch Room for one of our great fans, by the way. Thank you, Hunch. Pancakes yeah. don't absorb syrup as well, so you can't make a good sandwich with them. At one place we stayed for a roofing job, every morning I made a sandwich out of a waffle, bacon, eggs, and syrup. Here's one thing where I envy you being a dirty roofer, Hunch. Mm-hmm. I am a crystal, I'm a clean comic book artist, so I don't expend a ton of energy doing my job. Therefore, I can't have a pile of pancakes every morning. Now, if I was doing roofing, I could eat whatever the hell I wanted all the time. You know That's what right, I mean? Sure. So uh, you do have an advantage here. Although I do, I'm committed to working out, I'm lifting four days a week and walking twice every day. I'm on creatine now, by the way. I'm not a doctor. I'm not mm-hmm. recommending it. So uh, I did my research. Hutch, we appreciate you and we appreciate the hard work you do and what you put into comic skates. So thank you, brother. Absolutely, friend. Absolutely. Um, oh, Cranberry Langers is here. Hello. Hey. As usual, he's here. One of the greats. One of the greats. And uh, so sensitive, baby chap. Yeah, that kind of throws me off in 2022 that Van yeah. Damme and his brother, the twins, they're Chad and Alex. And nowadays, mm-hmm. the slang word for like a stud, like a cool dude, is a Chad. That's and then right. The, in this movie, the wimpy dork, not the wimpy one, but the dorky one is Chad and the cool one is Alex. You know what I mean? So, uh, However, I, Chad does all right for himself in his screen time. <laughs> he does. He's he a does. bit of a chat at the uh, at the gym, isn't he? You right. Know? And there you go. Yeah. So this is how we open up with Chad in Los Angeles, living with Frankie, running like a yoga slash karate studio, and he's helping this woman stretch. And it's all starts off that really is. erotic, but they play it for laughs. He's like yeah. showing her how to stretch her thighs, and then he's like telling people you got to have loose thighs you know, because with my thighs and these muscles and blah blah blah. I can do the splits. So, of course, we get some Van Damme ass. And some well, that and he does the splits in Hail Rock Grin, by the way. Uh, he does the splits, but then he rocks backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards as they all go, oh! And I'm like, right, oh, right. All my these women, Lord. He just has them eaten out of his hand. It's pretty funny. That is right. It's pretty funny. That is right. And he also does assault one of the karate students. I didn't get The guy just, yes. like, challenges him, and he ends up kicking the guy in the next week, so that's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. but then Frankie comes in with some news here. Um, I, now I haven't seen the movie in about, uh, in about a year, but the news is basically, you got a brother in Hong Kong, right? That's yes. basically the news. Uh, he's been looking for him. A guy shows up in the office, brings him an envelope of photos and they're all investigator photos at range of Alex doing his work. Cause he's in right. the under, you know, he's underground. He's, he's, uh, he's in the black market. So he gets he's photos of him and he looks at and he says, it's got to be him, you know? Right. And and so then that's when he finally, once he finds him, he decides, I got to, now it's the time because we finally right. located him. And uh, thank you, Mike Fan of Double Impact too. Because of my you know. big legs and karate, I can do the splits. No, no problem. problem. And then he's just doing the splits and just rocking. <laughs> that's you know? right. I feel like Van Damme might have a few children with these women in real life. I think ways. it's highly likely. Yes. <laughs> he had a little I would say so. impact of his own going on, you know? I mean, so. you can hear the ovulation happening. <laughs> <laughs> Super mastermind doing a split in front of the girls normally works. Uh, right. I warn you, it hurts like hell to get there. Hey, That's most things right. that are worth it do, friend. Most right things on. that are worth it do hurt. So, uh... <laughs> oh, geez. All right. So, yeah, he gets the info that he's got his brother, Alex, who's, like, in the underworld of Hong Kong. He's a smuggler, and they want to go find him. You know, he has to talk him into it. They head over there to Hong Kong. They go into Alex's place, which is, like, a bar with, like, a false false wall in the back where he has his, like, his own private room back there. He smuggles everything, liquor and probably electronics and vehicles. He does it. He's a bad guy. And when his Mm -hmm. girlfriend, Danielle, comes in, 
she goes up to Chad, the Hollywood uh, yoga studio guy, grabs him by the, you know, the crotch and is getting more mm. seductive with him because she thinks it's her boyfriend, Alex. Yep. We've all, we've all been there, right? <laughs> the mistaken yep. identity. Uh, it happens, you know, usually. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm dying, man. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just remembering that, like, listen. This flick has got so many things. It could only happen in the movie in 1991. Right, and you just right, right, got to right. love it, man. You got to love it. Oh. <laughs> kind of bring it like it's just red with envy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Danielle, she's, yeah, she's a bit of a looker. I'm a Corey Everson man myself. But, you know, Sean, yeah. you, can have, you can have Danielle. She ain't bad. But uh, right. absolutely. So uh, then, of course, Alex comes in, chewing his cigar, a little bit of stubble, hair slicked back. This is the bat, the badass Van Damme, the other twin. Uh-huh. And, you know, he's getting after his girlfriend. What are you doing with this guy? And I thought it was you. And Sean, didn't you tell me that you dated twins or you knew someone who dated twins? Was this someone else I talked to? I don't know. It wasn't me. I don't think I dated twins that I'm aware of. <laughs> hmm. I had this conversation with someone recently. They were talking to me about dating twins and how things went awry. So, Oh, my gosh. That sounds like a chokeout conversation. <laughs> Oh no! That he, told, <laughs> he told some awful story, like when I hosted Comic State Kings like a month ago. Oh, he yeah. said that he got with some girl, and mm-hmm. then a few weeks later he got with another woman that was older. And when he was out, oh house, yeah, no, I I remember that story. He saw a car outside and said, "Oh, you oh. know Jenny?" And she's like, "Yeah, I know Jenny. I'm her mom." So that was disgusting. So. Um, well, you know, those things happen. Uh, yeah, the audience can tell that Alex is the uncouth twin because he smokes cigars. I love that. Right. Uh, right. Yep. Yeah, he, he smokes cigars, and he seems to always be angry. Um, so then they talk it out, and Frankie's telling them, Griffith and, and Zhang and all those guys, they did away with your father, and he, they're collecting dividends on this bridge that belong to you guys. I don't know how that works. It doesn't matter. It's a plot point that basically – Griffith and Zhang are the ones that had Moon and those guys kill the parents so they could get all the money that this bridge tunnel thing is producing. Don't look uh-huh. into it further. That's just, just accept that. I don't know. That's, that's how it works. That's just how it is. So they talk about what they're going to do and we can't do it. We can't take on the mob. This is stupid. Should we? Shouldn't we? But it gives me one of my best lines where Alex is just like this dude from California, you know, eating granola. He's a total puss doing uh-huh. yoga, whatever he does. Get the hell out of here. And he tells him, take your black silk underwear and go back to Disneyland. I just love yeah, that. That's the best, yeah. Uh, that's right. Well, one so thing why don't you, you got to understand. Take your black silk underwear and go back to Disneyland. <laughs> right, right. Uh, one thing you got to understand about being a Californian, which I am, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah. People who are not from here and haven't spent any time here do not understand California. Think about this yes. for Americans in the audience, Americans, not Californians. Think about the way foreign people talk about America and make fun of it and mock it and hamburgers and gun violence and blah, 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 right? And then in your head, you're like, that's not true. We're good, sophisticated people. People talk about, Americans talk about California the way non-Americans talk about America. So living here, I always hear all this crap about California. It's a communist state and blah, blah. It's inconvenient to live here. It's not a hellhole. It's just like the government and the laws and taxes. It's mildly irritating, dude. The quality of life here is actually quite amazing. If you stay out of LA and San Francisco, but if you live where I live, San Diego, I mean, San Diego is the full distance of California. Sure. Um, And what we did is we actually drove back to go to Sequoia National Park and drove down the other side of California, which to me is the Midwest. And so we drove down that direction all the way down and then we came back and went up the coast. So, yeah, I mean, it's California is, is crazy that way, you know? Yeah. California is its own country. We have literally mm-hmm. everything. We have the desert. We have the tallest mountain, you know, snowy yep. mountains and skiing and beach and Hollywood, Silicon Valley. The biggest, uh, I just saw the Sequoia, the giant Sequoia forest. I went there last month. The trees. Oh, really? Look, oh, yeah. I went there with my wife. The trees don't look real. It looks like they you're don't. Lord of the Rings. Uh, a tree 40 feet wide. You're like, how is this even possible? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah, I was just there. Let me uh, let me scroll through here and see if I can find a picture of it because I yeah, know I have love, uh, God Bible truth. It's great to see you, my friend. Um, and yeah, Cranberry Langers. Uh, I did Big Sur when we went there when we were driving up the coast. We had a, a wonderful meal at some restaurant there. Then we went to 
um, uh, Carmel and Pebble Beach for my father-in-law who loved golf. God rest him. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a great time, man. Really great time. Yeah. You know? uh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I got I got the photos real quick. Yeah, there we go. Just, yeah, I was just there, and um, what is this? I have a video here. What what the hell is this? Yeah. Well, look at the people in the background. You see that red dot in the background? Mm -hmm. That's a person. Yep. Look at how big this effing tree is. It's like 300 feet tall, and that branch sticking out of it, the branch is like 10 feet, 10 feet wide. The branch. Is that the Sherman? Yeah, this is the General Sherman. It's the second mm -hmm. biggest tree in the world, apparently. Yeah. But, you know, we have this in California. Everyone thinks that California is the – Homeless camps on in Los Angeles and the ghetto on Figueroa Street and you know the poop everywhere in San Francisco and that does exist here, but I'm telling you it's one of the most beautiful places in the world because we have every climate. We have the highest mm -hmm. frozen mountains. The we have the hottest death. The hottest place on Earth is not in the Sahara Desert. It is in Death Valley, California. The average temperature there is over like 120 something in the summer. So yeah. uh, and then here's me standing next to one of the trees that cut a hole in. Oh my gosh! You know I mean? Yeah, I. So, I'm pretty sure I have a picture of me with our little babies there. Right. Back in the day, because they were really little when we took them there. And then we went up uh, Morro Rock as well, which was a blast. Yeah. Yeah. More, yeah, I could see Morro Rock. We went to the top, and you could see it. It's like 10, 20 miles away from where I was. Yeah, uh, dude, We didn't get crazy. out there, but we planned to go up there. The drive from my house to the Sequoia Place was like a six-hour drive. Yeah. And uh, it was such a beautiful drive. And you think, oh, California liberal weirdos, that's that's just L.A. and San Francisco. Really, it is. That's it. Yeah. Everyone, like 20 million people live in L.A., the area. So you know what's funny? Yes. Yeah. Is, is that, and I'll tell you this right now, it's, I tend to not have huge generalizations about entire states. Sure. And do you know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, it's, I'm in the smallest state in the country. I was born in one of the biggest, I was born in Texas, grew up in Tennessee, and the differences in people, if you walk, you know, from one end of this block to the next, oh, yeah. in terms of what you think and what their ideas are or whatever. But it's just, it's the way that things work. For me, the greatest resource of this country and something that you see showed off in those photos. And one, funny enough, something they do a great job of showing off in Hong Kong, for that matter, is, is the landscape and how many different um, how many different landscapes there are in all of America. You know, right. like with Hong Kong, it's the city, right? That's what attracts you to casting it, you know, in, in the, role of the central character for Beef Law. Yeah, every, everything I've drawn for Beef Law has like Victoria Harbor in the background. I'll show that in a minute here. Um, real quick, here's that. Uh, my wife and I, we were driving down the mountain. Oh, my gosh. And we pulled over uh, where you could see Moro Rock and all this. Now it's a phone video, so it's, it's the wrong way. But there's my wife walking around and, you know, there's Moral Rock right there, I believe. Yeah. Um, I had shaved my head, but uh, let's see. Yeah, it was a really, I mean, you go up 5,000 feet. You go up 5,000 feet to see. It's just uh, spectacular nature that we have here. You have to remember, California <laughs> is like 800 miles north yeah. and south. And at some points, it's like 300 miles wide. Down here in the San Diego, it's only like 150 miles wide at the very bottom of the Mexican border. But it literally has every type of climate you can think of. Ocean, mountain, desert, yeah. forests, like everything you can think of, we have it here. So uh, that whole bunch of liberals at Disneyland who can't buy a water gun, like it gets aggravating to hear it, but you just like have to tune it out, I guess. But um, you know what? Oh, think about Jack Sparrow. That's I've told people this all the time. It's got to be the worst. You've got to be the worst pirate I've ever heard of, but you have heard of me. <laughs> and that's the key. You know how the when you know your state has got you know has got problems when nobody talks about it. When's the last time you heard an intense and passionate pro con discussion about Rhode Island, man? You just right. let me know. When's the right. last time people don't even notice we're here half the time, man? Right. I love Rhode Island, but you know it is what it is. What what is Rhode Island's like topography? Is it mountainous? Is it flatland? Or what is it? It's uh, it's tough to say. I mean, it it's kind of like uh, the foothills of uh, eastern Tennessee. On some levels, not the mountainous aspect of it, but you drive a little ways and you got some rolling hills. You got tons of coast. But it's I, I have to tell you, man, it's it's kind of it's amazing. Look, I, Dan Dahl in the chat. I can't vote on this poll. I love them all too damn much. Well, well right now. 
Pancakes are winning. Let's go. There you go, guys. Pancakes I'm a pancake there. guy. My guys wife making it happen. My wife. Boom, bam, cooks. kapow! Awesome one. Yeah. Pale. She uh, Charlotte can attest this. My wife cooks for me three times a day usually. Uh, right she's on. wonderful. And on Saturdays, when I break my keto eating, she'll make me <laughs> pancakes. And I am this way about pancakes. Mm -hmm. I I think one pancake needs about a half a stick of butter on it. Yes. Like I like basically pancakes are delivery system for butter, in my opinion. Butter yeah. and syrup, you know. Um, and you, you got to get the syrup hot. Yep. There's no sense in having a hot pancake and ice cold syrup. That doesn't make any sense. So. Yep. Hail hunts the dirty roofer, and uh, uh, excellent. Frank, French toast, but you got to use French. Ooh, Red. Julie. Great to see you. Oh, look at this. Hunch's old man was born in Rhode Island at Quonset Point Naval Base. Got a lot of Navy friends. Got a ton of Navy friends out here. And uh, I just hear New Yorkers talk down. I think he's talking about Rhode Island. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when I went to Massachusetts, I was trying to get a new windshield wiper for my car because it was a 90-mile commute. I had to go pick one up. And the guy said, hi, oh, you're from Rhode Island. I said, yeah. He goes, you come to visit a real state? Wow. <laughs> Yo, yeah, oh yeah, but that's Massachusetts. That's how you say hello. We love Massachusetts, man. Right. Lord Crackhead 33, all my my uh, Massachusetts brothers. Well, yeah, who's hungry uh, now that wasn't when they joined listen, the stream? That's what, listen, you're not going to get that anywhere else. There's a lot of YouTube out there. I thank yeah. you all for being here. You're not getting food talk on any other channel like Chump and I do. Yeah. You know? So, and we have the bellies to back it up. We've got that's some exactly receipts. Right. As the kids say, we got receipts, baby. That's so, right. <laughs> hey. The yeah, I mean, it's Andrea Doria incident. Wasn't that a ship that went down? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't no, know that the was, history yes. of it, but I know I've heard of it. So, like, yeah, we'll tell you this, guys, and I promise we're going to get back to Double Impact, but this absolutely is um, is uh, is relevant to that in particular. One of my wife's teachers, when she was getting her Master's of the Art in teaching, lost her fiancé in the perfect storm. Really? Like she was engaged. That... Yes. He was lost at sea, never found. And not in that on that boat, but there were many people who were who were lost, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, quite a few actually. But yeah, and so it's that's what it is, man. Yeah, you can drive across Rhode Island in forty five minutes, man. Blink and you miss it. It's what it uh, is. From San Diego, I could be in uh, Disneyland in ninety minutes from my house mm -hmm. if there's not traffic. And it's usually a pretty easy drive. I could be in Vegas in four hours, I could be in Phoenix in about six. So those are yes. the major ways to go from where I live. I could be in Tijuana in about 20, 20 uh, 25, 30 minutes. So uh, I went there last month. Did I tell you? Where? where? Tijuana, Mexico. I yes, went... yes. You told me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Whoa. I know. Freaky. Sad. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful hardworking people. But, man, that uh, just uh, – I hadn't been there since high school, I think, or right after high school in 1996, 97. And just, mm -hmm. man, that – it makes you appreciate America. My goodness, yeah. the poverty there, it's really tough. So very sad, very sad. Yeah, man. I so. tell you, this the, the thing for me too is, um, and this is the funny part to me about all of these places, whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's California, to me, these were all such foreign concepts. So I thought my perspective of California was it was just all palm trees until I went there, you know, when I was a little older, right? Right. And with Hong Kong, it's funny. Hong Kong is, as you were saying, there's this almost mythical Hong Kong right. where there's all these underground secret martial arts competitions and battles right. and things going on. Do you know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. and you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of amazing how that works. And it's, it's, you get taken into this, uh, like the Italian uh, mafia movies or like the Sopranos, right? These this is a whole genre of film that goes to right. you know movies like Hard Boiled and all of the Hong Kong action cinema of John Woo. Uh, it's it's a huge thing, you know, the crime, you know, action gun flick of the underground in uh, Hong Kong. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, just consider the the crazy like the the city of Kowloon right there by mm -hmm. Hong Kong. For those of you that don't know, it was basically a beehive that it came up. I don't know in the forties, fifties, sixties. And it was finally demolished, I think, in the late 90s, early 2000s. But uh, Bloodsport takes place in Kowloon. I believe the, the tournament is inside there. And yes. it was like a city that had its own government, its own postal service. Uh, it's just one of the most weird things in the world. Thousands and thousands of people living. I mean, look, yeah. these hallways are just filthy and leaky water and wires everywhere. 
and uh, people just packed in like sardines. One of the weirdest things. Um, yes. Fascinating. Looks terrible. There's Kowloon right there. Uh. Looks just like a terrible place to live, but uh, fascinating. Uh, yeah, Hong yeah, Kong dude. does have a mystical quality to it, you know. With that, what, 99 years of British rule, right? That ended in, uh, what was it, 97, 98? I don't remember when it ended. Sorry, I was yeah. just thinking about a red dress for some reason. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hold on. Let's see. Uh, lived in a house of dirt floors when I visited Uganda. Wow. There you go. Jeez. Wow. Hey, I lost someone. Good to see yeah. you. Bummer Hong Kong was lost. Yes. Amen. Indeed. Cranberry Langers. Now, let's get your opinion on this, and then we'll get back to the film. French to toast with whipped cream and strawberries and powdered sugar. I, when I do the breakfast, pan bread. So pancake, French toast, waffles. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see blueberries. I don't want to see bananas, walnuts, chocolate chips, peaches. I, it better be butter, salted mm -hmm. butter, and maple syrup, the real stuff. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed to put anything else. I don't like this strawberries. I don't go for any of this. How do you go? Where do you go on this? Oh my gosh, man. I got to be honest with you. I'm a bacon and eggs guy. You know what I mean? Like I love my waffles, but my central things are meats okay. and eggs. I'm big okay. into it. So when it comes to that, it depends on what I'm having it with. Right. So for example, chicken and waffles, right? right. That's a particular thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I, what I'm eating, like if I'm, if I wake up and I'm like going, all right, what do we have? And then someone's like, the meat is sausage links. Or they're like, the meat is bacon. That changes every other choice I make. Oh. I don't know if you're like that at all, but if you have okay. certain combinations that you like, but you don't like to mix and match. But for me, that's, that's like the way all. it is, man. I, I like them all. Oh, right now, waffle is pulled ahead. We got to get out. We got to get out of this conversation. For we got. We do seriously because we're all getting hungry. I see it. Matt's is like steak and eggs. Hail. Okay. Shadow so Hawk talks. Hail. They're, they're gonna. Are they gonna take on Raymond Tang and Griffith who murdered their parents? Are they yes. gonna do it? Uh, Alex hates this idea. You can't take him on. He's involved in the underworld. He's a smuggler. He yeah. deals in all kinds of illegal shit already. He knows how powerful these guys are. It's a bad idea. Uh, but anyway, it's a bad she, idea. So they're gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, bad idea. They're gonna do it. And she works for Griffith. That's right. She has some office job. They never explain exactly what it is, or I don't remember. But mm -hmm. she does work for Griffith, and uh, she's able to find out some stuff about the illegal political machinations that they're up to. So, yes. um, so they get on his boat. I'm not exactly sure why, because he's going to do a deal. He's going to give some, like, I think some stolen bourbon and some cars. He's going to sell them to some Chinese guys. Uh, this is Alex, by the way, the badass brother. So mm -hmm. they're on the boat. They're making the deal with the guys, and uh, – all of a sudden, the harbor police find them. So mm -hmm. Chad, which is the L.A. Van Dam, he's like, okay, we got to get out of here. So we're going to dump some of these cars. So they dump some of the cars off. And then I love it. Frankie shoots at the car to blow it up. Um, of course, you, every every car in a 90s action movie and 80s, they do blow up. Yes, the only they do. One, only one or two bullets. Or if they flip over or fall off a cliff. Uh, turns out in the 90s, cars came with a trunk full of dynamite and nobody told the customers. Yeah, so, yeah, and uh, it scares. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, the Ford explosion. <coughs> oh goodness! Excuse me, I need a drink. Well, and you know what's interesting too about these about these two characters and or these three characters, I think is important to to point out. Is it of the the two, uh, Alex, and boy, listen. You know, you guys know how it is when you hear a double impact. And hail, Michael, great to see you here. Um, you and super mastermind as well. I missed you before, but I want to make sure I said that. Um, this this is this is the thing, right? You've got one guy who gets taken off by their nanny and then delivered right. to an orphanage, which I think it seemed to have none. Was it nuns or something? Who yeah, were there? A, nun, a nun comes out and picks him up. That's right, nun picks him up, right? So the assumption being that he was nannied and raised by this lady, the other guy is raised by a single dad. Right. And what was fascinating to me about that is, is the one who is sort of the 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 more emotional and dangerous and tough one is the guy who came up without a father right. and found his dad's in the life of crime. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. so that was like fascinating to me. Him and uh, him and uh, Frank's relationship is the most interesting. It's the first yeah. time there's probably ever been a good man in this dude's life right there. I always notice it. He's always at odds with him. Yeah, that is true. There, he's always telling Frankie why it's stupid, why it can't be done. I'm the Hong Kong guy. This is my business. Yeah. I know. 
You don't take on these mafia dudes. They're too tough. It's too dangerous. Just keep our head down. Keep selling smuggled stereos or whatever, and that's it. I do like how he has the courtesy to wear black jackets and black trench coats, just so we know he's a tough guy. So, <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Uh, I went and watched this movie after you guys started this feature. Oh, well, good. There you good. go. Yes, Hail, Julie. absolutely. Uh, Shin Aka, Aka Kage, right? Aka Kage? Mm-hmm. Double Impact, great movie. Best movie. Best Van Damme movie around. Absolutely, absolutely right. Let's see. Oh, Super Mastermind. I had none teachers. They were mean and wanted the public schools outdone in sports. That's funny. Yep, there, there, was, have it. Uh, there was a great comment right here. Hold on. I put it up, but I didn't read it. Remember yes. the Simpsons episode when Homer wrapped a stick of butter with a pancake? Makes sense, oh, actually. It does, doesn't it? That is, you know that I'm going to do something like this. You know that, right? Yep. I can literally put a half stick of butter on one pancake. Um, yeah. You know, it's a good thing I'm there pancakes like once a month or so. So, Michael, when you uh, when you posted that in the comments section, I feel like uh, I got to uh, cut to that scene in Pacific Rim where the uh, the the guy, what's his name, Stacker Pentecost or whatever, p- played by uh, Idris, El- or Idris Elba, goes, right. reset the clock! Like, you know, reset the clock till we go and get a stick of butter and cake <laughs> because it's, it's about to be on, man. It's about to be on. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they reconvene here. Uh, they're having a little lunch, trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do. Frankie, Chad, and Alex. And there's a great scene, uh, a great shot. I didn't show it. They're eating some food, and since uh, Chad is from Los Angeles, Hollywood guy, he doesn't know the street food, and they really show someone chop a frog's head off. I should have got a shot of that. And uh, Chad has apprehension about eating this thing, but he makes a funny joke. He's all, what's he supposed to do, make my geek bigger? And uh, yeah. I, that always gave me a good laugh. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Uh, that was that was some hilarious stuff, man. Right. Hail Ryan Johnson. Yeah. It's good to see no, you guys. Age you know, consumer. Look at this. Yeah, right. Yeah, all the great, all of our great fans and friends and customers are here. Absolutely. Much love. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Please hit the like. Um, Nosfero and Truth, Justice, Merrick Way, the links for those are in the description. You got to check those out, guys. We're bringing you fun like this Van Damme movie, all the stuff, because this is what Sean and I believe in. We believe in entertaining first, and entertaining is all about fun, and then we can give you an uplifting message. We give you some sugar. You know, a little sugar helps the medicine go down. So we're not preaching that yet. You know, but we'll yeah, give man. you heroism, but we'll wrap the heroism up in fun. Not unlike that stick of butter wrapped in a pancake. You know what I mean? I got to so. say this too. Chris W., I respect you, man. You've got people taking shots at your He's French toast. And you come in here and you say, French toast is the only choice. And yeah. that is the thing, guys. No matter where we fall in these serious political issues right. of pancakes, waffles versus French toast, you know, these are the things – Frankly, really? the divide nations. Americans believe, you know, when it comes to the breakfast buffet, e pluribus unum. That is what it is. <laughs> well, I, I am a pancake man, but since Van Damme is the muscles from Brussels, sort of French, I'll, That's let, right. I'll, let, I'll let French toast win tonight. But if you're a pancake yep. lover out there, I need you guys to rally for me right now. You got to rally. If we can rally and bring pancakes around to the lead, let's do it, baby. Absolutely. If there was a way to cheat at the voting, I would cheat right now, just so you know. Right on. Hey, listen, you know. Waffles only. Waffles only waffles. French toast is in the lead again. Um, From freedom toast to French toast. That's right. Remember that after September 11th, something stupid Mm -hmm. political happened. And then some, I don't know, Senator Congress said in the Washington, D.C. cafeteria for the Congress or the Senator both or whatever, we will not call these French fries. We will call them freedom fries or whatever. That is one yeah, of the, and you know what happens? Is that somewhere in Belgium, they were like, they're from Belgium. Right? <laughs> we just spoke French. Change them to Belgium fries. You know, the, wow. the historians were concerned. <laughs> yeah. You know? Bel- yeah. Isn't that Abby. funny? But that came from Belgium, and <laughs> because they speak French, there people call them French fries. Right. French don't even know what those are. Yeah, French don't even know what a French fry is. They don't yeah. understand. Yeah, Adam D. They call it a Royale with Sorry, go ahead. Whoa, Adam D. <laughs> with the haymaker. My Oof. goodness. My goodness. Oof. I like them all. Stop making me choose. No, you Keep have to real. choose right now. You have to choose which one of these three lives. And the other two, you have to wait till lunch to eat them. So. That's awesome. Hail. Uh, 
Oh, ever the diplomat, the great Dan Lawless. Check him out last night on Players Club. What a fun show we're having there. Tuesdays, yeah, 8 p.m. Pacific. Aaron Lepresti, Dan right Lawless, Sergio Cario, David Williams, and the prankster gangster Gary Martin himself. Right uh, that's on. a fun show there. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Oh, here's some historical context. France wasn't supporting Washington's war on terror into the Middle East or something. I think that's what it was. So they said, no more French fries, freedom fries. And uh, it was cringy. It was cringy. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, they have their breakfast or whatever. And then poor Chad gets picked up by Raymond Zhang, the big bad. Yep. And uh, takes him off to, I love it. It's always like an abandoned warehouse, construction site, down by the docks. I don't know what it is. There must be a psychological reason. I'm being serious. I'm not being silly about men yeah. and violence and masculinity. And the work we do is sometimes violent. I was a construction worker and you're physical and you're sweating and you're hurting yourself mm. with pounding yourself with the hammer. I, I remember I was a construction worker when my right before my son was born. I, I was doing construction, tilt-up construction. And uh, I was bending over, holding a form, a wooden form. Is you build a wooden form and then they pour the concrete in the form and you, then you get rid of mm. it. I was holding the form with one hand, swinging my hammer. And, uh, oh, dude, don't. I know that feeling. Way. This is the literal hammer I was swinging. Oh, my dude, friend no. Mike, my friend Mike gave me this giant, this is a very heavy 24-ounce hammer. I, with full force, smashed this finger with this hammer because my boss asked me a question, and I was just like, I was ha hammering, and I looked up at him and just went, bam! And I looked at my nail, and it turned white like no blood, and then uh -huh. it turned blue. And then it went, yep. and blood just started coming out. And I hit it so hard, it didn't hurt. It was just numb. <laughs> yeah. My, Mighty Geek uh, Studios bringing, bringing it. He goes, it's a noir film trope to have that meeting down by the docks and down in the city. Absolutely. Um, all action, all great action films have it down by the docks, in the, in the working area, in those factories that seem to only make steam and fire. And um, But why? What is why does that feel so right? Because we all know it feels right, but I think that the environment is not a is it a the environment itself is masculine, right? So the well, environment it's, it's, is gears and hooks and chains and fire and steam and all very a, manly things, you know. I think it's also a bit like what uh, what Joseph Campbell said in uh, in Treasure Island. You know, it's it's like the play or or in uh, uh, Moby Dick. You know, it's you go to the place where. People are coming and going. You go to the port. You go to the place where things change. Moss Eisley Cantina is a really good yeah. example of that. You yeah. go to the place where the tough people are and where, oh, by the people who have been out to space and are coming back from space, and you've never left the planet. He's not, He seems, even though he grew up in France, let me tell you, this boy seems like he's never left that studio when he hits yeah. Hong Kong. I mean, come on, you grew up in France, kid. It's not like you've never been in an airport or seen you know, right. street food before. <laughs> you know, I refuse to believe it. Not to mention in California. But I do think it's it's um, it's one of those things I, I think about a lot where it's like, you know, oh, yeah, that was. Can we go back to uh, Bolo Young's face right there? Right. Because this so to me. Zang, he he yeah. captures Chad, takes him mm -hmm. out to the uh, it's like a construction site where there's some container boxes. And he has his group of like five or six henchmen thugs. Yeah. And one of them attacks Van Damme and loses. And when he gets kicked backwards, he runs into Moon. And Moon is so hardcore that he breaks his own comrade's neck before he's mm -hmm. going to fight Van Damme. That's how like, yes. what a sawed off psycho this guy is. You know? Yeah, he is. And this is the thing about it, guys. That right there to me is, yes, it's in movies. Yes, we've seen this kind of thing. But to me, that is the comic book language defined. Right. The scar on the face and the one white, whited out pupil of the eye. Right. It's and, and the fact that this guy, and we think about this all the time, right? You see it in Kill Bill. There's this element of it that a lot of people miss, which is that when somebody has an eye patch over their eye in a character sense, it's almost like half of their humanity, of their perception has been removed. Sure, now, you the, can the, have, eyes, the eyes are the gateway to the soul. Exactly, right? And so here's the thing. People go, so are you saying that it's an eye patch is always a bad thing? No. If we're talking about true grit, Right, whether it's you know John Wayne or or uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe blanket on his name. Oh, uh, uh, Jeff Bridges, right? right? Whoever it is, it's it's there's this other the positive side of it, but either way, it's like a no nonsense thing. But in this case, with it exposed and it being shown that way, it gives it this this 
very creepy, almost animalistic intensity on that side of his face. Right. And, you know, you, he, it's just, it's such a great character, man. The, yeah. the scar on the side of the face, it's the coolest thing in the world, man. And, and I, I do think you're absolutely right. The scar is amazing. It, it takes away some of his humanity. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's an amazing, like, serendipity, fortuitous coincidence that in real life, Bolo Young, he just couldn't figure out English or he just didn't bother. So he always has very, very few lines, like literally yeah. three lines in this movie. He's in Bloodsport, two, three lines in that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes him even more terrifying because yes. he's this force of nature. And I'm a big time bodybuilder. You guys know that. I love lifting weights and all that. And Bolo Young, he has this muscle structure to build huge bones because what he has, he has stubby arms. He yeah. has short limbs. And when you have short limbs, you have tremendous leverage. So when you look at um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the great champions, many times they have shorter arms and legs. Guys like me that have a seven foot wingspan. Well, when I bench press, I mean, I'm going, I'm going two yeah. and a half feet. You get, yep. you know, Arnold and these guys in there, they're going, you know, 14 inches when they do it. So yep. they just, and when you see Bolo Young rip his shirt off, he looks like an animal. It's insane. You know, he's got this great physique. <laughs> Old, old, old dirty fatty ale. That's a great one. Arr, you'll be dissing me eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so Van Dam gets rid of the first guy that's attacking him. <laughs> and yep. then uh, Moon kills him because that was necessary. Yep. And uh, it's not close. Moon just destroys him here. Yeah, and he, ends up throwing him into down. the container ship and all that. <laughs> they end up throwing Van Dam on the street and his brother and Frankie find him and they head back to reconvene yet again. What are we uh -huh. going to do about these guys? This is serious. They know we exist. And if Griffith and Zhang know that Chad and Alex are alive and they know they killed Chad and Alex's dad, the British government official, Mr. Wagner, whatever his title was, they know that they got to eliminate these guys. Yep. You know I, mean? I wonder why they didn't kill uh, uh, kill Chad. I wonder what that was. Do you think it was to draw uh, draw Alex out? That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe that's why they didn't kill him. I no, mean, didn't actually, kill him um, it was because they thought he was Alex, and because they thought that um, they they uh, he oh it was because of what happened in the port, right? So it was sort of like a get you know keeping him in line kind of thing, right? You know, what am I going to do with you? Come work for me. Or, you know, you screwed up that shipment. So he was basically paying the penalty for that. You right. know, boy, the chat's blowing up, dude. Right. Absolutely. The chat is Absolutely. going nuts. So I just want to go back uh, to Beef Law. This is my love letter mm -hmm. to uh, to this movie. Because you have Max Volkov and he's an underground pit fighter in Hong Kong. And he's got, I haven't decided yet. I already wrote the script fully. I don't know if I want to go with the younger brother that's high school age or the twin brother to honor Van Damme always having twins in movies. But the whole thing is, and this character here, Chong Chi Hua, he's one of the big, big heavies for the bad guys. And he's named after Moon's character, Chong Li. And mm -hmm. you'll see in my background, I'm always referencing container ships and uh, Victoria Harbor back there. That building with the zigzags, that's a famous building in Victoria Harbor. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, this book right here, Beef Law, it really, really is a love letter to... Um, to everything double impact. You yeah, I, I, I've got something you got to share there, man. Oh, where is it? Hold on, hold on. Uh, it's, it's responding to the our, our beloved chat. The question one has to ask themselves oh. is, are they a Van Damme fan or not? This is the Jean-Claude Van Damme one-third scale statue um, that would look great with some candles around it in the center of a shrine uh, in your dojo. This oh is, my gosh! This is uh, Dude, this it's almost is how two they feet roll. Tall. Yep. Oh, that's a thousand. Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> Gabe is like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. You know what? I, you know what my brain is doing right now. Um, yeah. All the cap. You know, like in uh, the Hangover, he's doing all the calculations when they're playing blackjack. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I don't want to put you in a spot where I'm you're doing all. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to put you in a in a. Listen, you know, if you yeah. haven't backed Truth, Justice, American Way, I need you all to buy 10 copies right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me just tell you this right now, guys. I am a, uh, I, I'm a crack dealer when it comes to uh, all of this kind of stuff, man. Look at this. Stallone oh. right there. The complete films. Oh. There you go. $1,000. Stallone. 
Stallone. All right, you know? all right. Oh, oh, is uh, that? Oh my gosh, is that one of his prints of his? Is something he drew? No. Hey, you know, uh, sometimes I like to draw some. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, guys, come on now, you're killing us here. Oh, only a, get this off the screen. Sorry, sorry, the guys, voice. sorry. This is my fault. My bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> hey, uh, Andy, good to see you. Uh, Gabe was trying to explain this uh, purchase on the credit card. Yeah. Uh, the great thing about my wife, she would just let me buy it if I told her I wanted it. She is like the most agreeable person in the She's world. She's awesome, dude. Yeah. She's a gardener. Hail to the missus. With, with a green thumb. I have eight foot stalks of corn in my backyard, guys. I live That's in San right. Diego. In, He's uh, growing in a lot life. of corn in the backyard, guys. I have corn, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, carrots, broccoli, green onions. I have like 15 or 20 vegetables. She did it all. I have chickens. I have four chickens. I get two to four eggs every day. And uh, my dog was chasing one of the chickens in the yard today. The gate got left open for the chickens and the dog. Oh, oh my gosh. And he cornered her. And I'm like, hey! I yelled at him and stopped him because I saw him out the window. And he, mm -hmm. I shit you not, Sean. He's two feet away from this chicken. I yelled at him. He stops and looks at me. And he goes, he literally was licking his lips, looking at Messing the with you. Oh. Hail Teflon, Ron. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. He, a he the corn. <laughs> yeah. Let me, oh, by the way, someone someone called me out and they said, what about those Frazetta statue shots? I'll see if you guys can see this. But Let's see it. right there in the center with her arms raised, right yes. about there, is a Frazetta statue and the saber-toothed tiger that is the base. So I make sure that I practice what I preach, people. All right? He does. Or irrespon I mean, responsible purchasing of collectibles. So there you go. Boom. <laughs> Cross All right. So Here we go. After Chad gets his butt beat, they're like, okay, we got to do something because we can't live this way. We got to take these dudes out. Yeah, man. Um, they get on a boat. You know, the little buildings in the background here, it's like an abandoned hotel, like a resort or something. Yeah. And this apparently, uh, Alex, the hardcore smuggler brother, he has access to this thing. He can just stay there. So this is going to be their base of operations as they strike at Griffith, Moon, Raymond Zhang, and Corey Everson from the shadows. Uh, yeah. She of the thick thighs, Corey Everson. She is a vision. Um, anyway, so they go there, they set up, and then they, the two brothers sneak down in this really great sequence where they go and Love attack. It. Um, is it what are they making here? Drugs or smuggling guns? I yeah. I didn't catch it. They're they're doing one of those eighties, nineties things. The bad guys, Raymond Zhang's people are doing. I think it's drugs. I'm almost yes, certain. drugs. And, and then the he's two, delivering cognac. <laughs> that's right. And the, and the two brothers, Chad and Alex, they sneak in, and there's great lighting in this, guys. As Beautiful a comic lighting. book colorist. Comic books and movie are sister arts. They're so similar because the storyboard stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then comic books are basically storyboards. It's all very similar. I love the lighting in the sequence. They keep pushing the red and the green and the red and the green so much of this. It's a mm -hmm. gorgeous sequence. A lot of great gunplay. And your typical 90s. Look at that shot, though, dude. Look at the light there. The I one guy it. in shadow, the one guy in light, they both have the cigarettes. And one of them, it's the white of the cigarette that's the pop there. And then on the in the dark, it's where the fire is, where the where it's lit. That's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, Mike figured out what Raymond Zhang's gang was doing. They were putting drugs inside of guns. <laughs> that's right. Listen, people, you either want to go all out or not. You fill right. your car with gasoline. I don't mean the tank. Right. Let me be clear. I mean the whole interior. And then push it off a boat, and then you fill your guns with drugs. Come on, oh, people. My Let's goodness. make it happen. Yeah. So this sequence has some great gunplay. There's a scene where Alex is firing two like Glocks and like rolling Dude, on the ground. Beautiful. It's it's a really fun scene. A lot of that great 90s gunplay and martial arts. It's this is the th this is the business end of these movies. The martial arts scenes are fantastic. You know, filmed in Hong Kong with all those great stuntmen and stunt coordinators. And the great, to me, that Hong Kong has that rich, rich history of amazing mm -hmm. fights on screen. I do some small independent comics. Like, I don't color them. I do the gray tone coloring for a guy named Mike Kelly, who's a fan mm -hmm. of David Williams. And he, uh, I hooked up with him about two years ago. And somehow he has the rights to Fist of Fury and other Bruce Lee things. Whoa! And, and um, I've done a few issues of that. He draws them, and then I do the gray tones. So, and he's a Hong Kong cinema fanatic. And uh, he actually did stunt work in Hollywood, this guy, Mike Kelly. And then uh, we did a Ron Hall comic. Ron Hall is a black yes. gentleman who did black exploitation kung fu stuff. Yes, and, uh, uh, yeah. Just, yeah, we just did a Ron Hall comic uh, recently. Dude. Uh, yeah. 
I don't, I haven't talked about that much because I'm not in charge of the project. So it wasn't my, it wasn't really my place to like, Hey, I'm working on this and that. You're, Cause I don't know how he wants to publicize it. Triple talk threat, about. man. I told you. Yeah. Working hard all the time. Thank you. We do. So yeah, I love this scene. They go attack yep. the gun, drug, whatever smuggling facility <laughs> and they blow it up at the end, which is shocking. Yes. Now look at the lighting there. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. You have that strong indigo, like, you know, very strong blue, and then the great, the fire behind it. Great contrast there. Amazing. Yeah, man. Okay, so then the girlfriend, Danielle, the blonde, not Corey Everson here, woman mm -hmm. of one of my dreams, at least. Um, Danielle tells Chad and Alex, Raymond Zhang and Griffith, they're having a, a big meeting with all the gangsters at the Climax Club tonight in Hong Kong. Yep. So Chad and Alex get the bright idea. We're going to infiltrate this. It's a fun, fun scene. They dress up in tuxedos and pretend to be like waiter delivery men, and they're delivering big boxes of champagne. So it's a really fun right scene. So there you see all the bad guys huddled around the table talking about all the drugs and guns and all the shit that they're up to. And uh, here comes either Chad or Alex, and they're delivering this stuff and putting it in different places. Delivering the cognac. <laughs> right, exactly. the cognac. And really, it's, explo it's explosives. I don't know. Yep. This, it, yeah, this is a crazy scene. Uh, blowing everything up. And then they get in a huge fight. And, you know, everyone's fleeing. And then there's Dude. this great moment. I told you my friend Merlin, who introduced me to these movies when I was about 12 or 13, we would also always say the one-liners. You know, take your black suit underwear and go back to Disneyland or you will never know. The other line we love from this movie is Raymond Zhang doesn't know. I forgot to tell you guys this. When he picks up Chad and they take him out to the field and the, and the container ship and Moon beats him up, Raymond and Moon and all of them, they don't know that Chad exists. They think it's Alex the smuggler. And finally, when he sees the two twins here blowing up the Climax Club and beating up all the goons, um, what Raymond Zag comes to realize is there's a great scene. They show one and they show the other brother, the two Van Dams running, and Raymond and Griffith come out of that room after the explosion and all the smoke clears, and Raymond says, where is it? Where do I have the photo of it? There's uh -huh. two of them. They it's such cool. a great moment yep. <laughs> where he realizes there's two of these uh, – French martial or Belgian martial artists. So, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Climax he did club. great in this too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, great actor. Right. And, uh, you know, I have a character who may or may not be sort of based on this guy in B Flaw. He's, mm -hmm. not, he's not Raymond Zhang. Uh, you know, coincidentally, and I didn't do this in, on purpose, his last name is Fang. And his daughter is like one of his henchmen. And then the Russians work for him and stuff. And yeah, so, uh, but anyway, a Fang and Zeng, I didn't even think about that. Goodness. Yeah, All right. right. It was probably, no cross uh, comics too, man. And it's and, and everyone's doing great. I, yeah, look at this, man. This has turned into a battle. I don't know if you guys are going on Twitter and putting out the chat and trying to get people to uh, to come to the stream to support your favorite breakfast. We thank you for doing so. Right. And we thank you for hitting that like. Guys, it's great. Thank you. Uh, it, was it was the Climax Club hunch. Yep. Um, you know, speaks for itself. It sure does. <laughs> so anyway, they attack the Climax Club. Raymond Zhang says, he's both. He's like, there's two of them. So that's a great twist in the, here in the mm -hmm. second act. And they get away. They head back to their island. And then Frankie and Alex are pissed off because Chad steals the boat. Remember, Alex has mm -hmm. the boat. Goes back to Hong Kong to get Danielle, to get her out of there. Because things yep. are about to get hot. So, yep. then, so then Chad has his own. He takes the boat. Great shot I got there. Um, yep. And they're running away, and they're running into this harbor, part of Victoria Harbor, with all those like little ships that'll sell you noodles right off the ship, mm -hmm. or fish, whatever. It's nah, a I great chase scene. Corey Everson. What is Corey Everson's villain name in this? I don't remember. I just know her real name. Corey I Everson. totally forget. Yeah, because right. it's one of those knowing the actor's name and right. not knowing and the character's every time name. Every I think about her, I just think of her powerful thighs. Well, and, yeah, uh, and they have her jumping and hurtling over things right. like a tank right. in this. Man. So they're they're running from ship to ship, and they finally get. Close to their oh, ship. Right here. But they, I, but I they, want to get into the detail of this photo in a second. Keep talking. No, I just, they don't they, <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were going for it. I <laughs> no, I'm not going, going anywhere intelligent. Go game. Oh, okay. Uh, and he tells her jump, so they have to jump out. Here comes Corey Everson, and there. It's, Holy God! <laughs> this is filmed so great, dude. They're yes. going up and under and under masts and barrels and ropes and everything. Her and like another guy or two. And they just can't seem to uh, catch uh, Chad and Daniel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they do that. Ah, like they get away in the boat. 
Like how fast can you get away in a boat, by the way? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so, but Chad and Daniel get away and it goes to this amazing, now I kept a PG 13. They don't have clothes, but I got them from the neck up and Chad does not sleep with his brother's girlfriend, but in a drunken fit rage, hate, hate stupor, Alex thinks that's what's going on. So he's back at the hotel, just pounding probably the cognac he sells or whatever illegally and getting angrier and angrier and angrier and destroying already destroyed place, but he's destroying it worse because he can't stop picturing this in his head. I don't know why. Maybe Van Dam uh, had in his contract that he got to do a nude scene with Danielle. Um, uh, it goes on a little too long, and I watched Alex, it with my no, son. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Disagree. And I want to say this, too. This is important, right? Um, Alex couldn't stop picturing his head. Hell, I couldn't stop picturing it in my head. You know, this uh, – <laughs> it was uh, – these were difficult times. These right. were difficult times. Trying times. I mean, yeah, imagine being – 13 and you see this and uh well the we thing with this play... movie that was terrible i don't know if you remember this but all of the vhs cassettes were faulty they would always break at this scene for yeah, some reason like the tape wore out right it there wore out right there odd yeah yeah odd. uh <laughs> she could probably swim faster than the boat with those thighs yeah let's yeah, go back she, probably, to the <laughs> she should have gotten the water I mean, ran on top she, of it she literally was miss olympia like six seven years in a row Corey everson yeah she's absolutely uh Absolutely stunning lady, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't like muscular women like as my taste. Not that I hate them. But uh for some reason, she does it for me. I don't it's the face mostly. You know, I like the nose, love the big eyes. I won't go too far, guys. You know, you guys know a lot about me. You don't need to know everything. Okay. But uh yeah, Corey Everson, wow. She would have made a great She-Hulk, don't you think? Yes, I do think she would have made a great She-Hulk. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that was pitched she, several times. Did, she does not skip leg day, this lady. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I think oh, she only does leg day apparently with those. Exactly. Yes. So where were we? Where were we? Um. Uh. Yeah. So he's mad. He, he's like, oh, and there's a great line right here. So way back in the first act, when the mm -hmm. brothers first meet and they find out about each other, and we want to take on Raymond Zhang and Griffith, and he's like, get the hell out of here, take your black suit underwear, and go back to Disneyland. That's what he tells them. Remember? Well, when mm -hmm. he finally sees his girlfriend and his brother. And he's like made up this story that they were having sex. He's like, oh, Mr. Silk Underwear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He goes, like, Mr. Like Silk Mr. California, Mr. Right. Perfection. And he goes, oh, no, he goes, chill out. And he goes, chill out, Mr. California. Chill out, Mr. Silk Underwear. Uh, what is it, Mr. Perfection? You want to see how we chill out in Hong Kong? <laughs> right. One of the greatest freaking I, I do love it's, it's impressive in life when people make up something and then they just commit to it and they're angry yep. my wife was a waitress way back before we got married and one of her co-workers dreamed that her husband cheated on her and got up and hit him in bed <laughs> man that's rough dude like what the hell man you gotta Isn't... love him man it's like that's your dream. How you, you should be mad at yourself, not me. Uh, yep. Let's see. Uh, hmm, I wonder if this is significant at all. After having a cigar in his mouth throughout every scene, including finding action, Alex finally spits out a cigar two thirds of the way into the runtime. I don't know if that has any significance. That's interesting. But it's an interesting thing you notice. Yep. Um, let's see more. Right before his brother begins fantasizing about his girlfriend, subconsciously, Alex's cigars are just enough. To then chug a bottle of Johnny Walker Red. Oh, just that, so. oh, okay. That was Johnny Walker. He's going hard for it. Jeez. Yeah, he was going for it. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets drunk, calls him Mr. Silk Underwear. They fight. It's not a great shot I got, but they're fighting on the balcony. Well, yeah, because in that shot, you can see the double. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I always wonder who the double is because they'll do a two shot where it's the back of the guy's head and then mm -hmm. Van Damme's face. And you, I wonder who that actor is that played the other one, you know? Yes. So, oh, well, yeah, he's I, in the movie. They show his face. Really? Yeah. The guy who, uh, when uh, when Frankie is handcuffed up to the pipe at the end of the movie, the oh. guy who comes up to her and then turns around and goes, oh, shit. And then he gets hit. That's the doubles cameo. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Sean wants to do a figure study of Corey Everson for artistic reasons. Um, I would. I would yeah, if I, I was think I'd work in a lot of shots. I really would. Yeah, let me hold on a second. I gotta let me see a Chrome tab. 
and then uh, here we go. See if you can get that on screen. Let's do it. This is oh. Alana Shaw, the actress uh, oh. that I was in love with. Uh, this is her Instagram. 31 and, years uh, later, she's still got it, huh? Yeah, she's, do uh, she's got it. She's doing all right. She hasn't called me, but oh. that's all right. She's playing hard to get. She's playing hard to get. She's what playing the do? long game. She is. She is absolutely playing the long game. Yeah. And this is the thing, you know, it's amazing to see there. <laughs> she is from 2016, I think. Um, but yeah, wow. there you go. Yeah. So yeah, that was my, that was my crush right there. There she wow. is. Wow. You guys are dedicated to your crowd. That's right. You know, I once mm -hmm. told my wife what I should do is high. Like when, and I'm, this is true. This is a fact. When I was in college, the most I ever learned about drawing was the live nude models. Mm -hmm. Shant, you were a professor. You can attest to this. When, yes. you look, when you look at pictures of the human body, it's yep. two-dimensional, and you're, it's like copying a drawing. So you're not yes. getting it. But when the nude model is there and you can kind of move around and look and up and down and side to side, you're really getting how the bones tuck into this and the muscle tucks into that, and it's just an amazing education. Now, although that is true, I have not been able to figure out how to convince my wife to let me bring nude models to the house so I can, you know, sharpen my drawing skills. Yeah. So well, if anyone I, has a suggestion, yes. I'm trying to make that happen. Let me so. tell you, this is um, the one idea that a friend of mine who was a fellow art professor during that time had that was a great idea is he wanted to do a life drawing class because he was frustrated by how little students were learning. He right. wanted to do it or how little they were studying. He goes, they were drawing from life and this is what they were doing. They would draw on the paper eyes on the paper and then glance over at the model and then spend more time on the paper. He said, what you're supposed to be doing is look at the model right. and glancing at the paper to check your positioning because there's all the information is on the model. Right. So he had this idea of doing a class where he would have the nude model, but the nude model would be in another room from your paper. So you would have to go in there and study and then come back and have to draw from what you saw in your memory and go back and check. And he goes, and this is the crazy thing about it because it's training you to remember because it said they weren't looking well enough right. to study and doing the memorization. So for anybody drawing from life, you can absolutely, you know, find great stuff. Uh, art, what is it? Uh, Postspace.com has got amazing photo reference. Three, 24 photos around of a figure. If that's something someone really wants to study, it's the best place for it. Right. Um, you know, outside of being able to, if you have the money to hire someone, you know, to come to your house. And the thing about it is, is that it's every time I've ever seen photo reference, it's almost at the perfect angle, wow. but never quite. But when it's a 24 rotation, you just click next, 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 and it rotates. Sure. It's awesome. That does sound so, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I remember uh, Seeger Hartgers was my professor in mm -hmm. college. He was one of two professors, three that I had respect for. The rest were postmodern weirdo liberals that couldn't yeah. draw and they liked to splatter paint. Ugh. They hated representational art. Not great. But Seeger was a professional artist for years, joined the U.S. military to get his American citizenship. He was from ne the Netherlands, Dutch mm. guy. Great guy, salt of the earth. He retired in 2019. He's a grandfather and all that. Love Seeger. Amazing illustrator, amazing painter. And I would take his life drawing class over and over. You only had to take it once to get your degree, but I would take it over and over and over every semester if I could. And I remember yeah. the, thing, the two things he told me were like, draw what you see. Because what you yeah. have in your head is a Rolodex. For those of you that remember what a Rolodex is, you have a picture file in your head of icons. The eye is an almond with a circle in it. Eh, eh, there, there's more to it than that. There's more and less when you're trying to abstract. And when mm -hmm. you look at the life drawing model, you really see these abstract shapes and planes. And it was great because at Guggenheim Hall, that was the name of the building where the class was, the top floor was the women's dance uh, st studio. Mm -hmm. So that, and he would put ads up around the campus, around the art buildings, and we would have dancers be our nude models all the time. So they mm -hmm. were tip top shape, you know, 19, 20, 20 years old doing dance hours and hours a week. So they, mm -hmm. you know, they were just totally fit. And it was just, I learned, there are things to this day, obviously, that I remember about where the ankle bone is, where this rib, this, that, and the other, um, because of what I could see on those bodies. So life right drawing, it, it's just so important, life drawing. It is. And uh, we got to get my wife to allow me to hire life drawing models here. There so, we have it. Yeah. I remember one day we finally had a guy and my classmate, I don't remember his name. It was a guy who was a buddy of mine sort of. 
And uh, he's like, oh, great, a guy. And then the <laughs> life drawing model sits down, spread legged, <laughs> right at the my friend that was complaining. There you go. You just had to sit there and look at it for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. But it was so funny because he was complaining that that guy just faced him. That is that's right. what happens. It's All it's right. the uh, the horror of the whole thing. Hold on, I say. And I have to uh, I have to do this. Uh -oh. There you go. <laughs> Cindy Crawford is my all time. Amen. Favorite, besides my wife, that's right. She's the prettiest woman to ever live. Besides my wife, Cindy Crawford. Right on. So there you go. So absolutely. Okay, moving forward. So the brother thinks his brother, Chad, no, Alex thinks Chad got with his brother. Alex thinks Chad was a total Chad with his lady. Yes. And uh, they get in a drunken fight. And then uh, Zhang and Moon and all these, I mean, they show up in military clothes, which is weird. I must have yeah. missed that point here because they're gangsters. They're mafia and all that. But I don't know how they get like people. I don't know. They're, they're, all of a sudden they're wearing paramilitary outfits, but they're not government officials. They're gangsters. I don't get it. Anyway, they find the hideout on the secret island with the secret rundown hotel, and they kidnap Frankie, and they kidnap Danielle. And the two brothers are going to have to figure this out. So here, uh, so on a giant, like, container ship down by the docks, mm -hmm. all great 90s action takes place down by the docks, they got Frankie tied up. I just love these industrial settings and action movies. Yeah, man. <laughs> There's a part where they're torturing Frankie, and they just hit him with a hose of hot steam where they open a valve. And oh, she's blasting yeah. him with steam. He's Freaking screaming. terrible, man. Right. And gr so Griffith is coming down the stairs in the black suit. Zhang is there. Remember, they were the guys behind the plot to kill Van Damme's parents way back when they were babies. And so you telling me the guy with his hand on Frankie, that's Van Damme's stunt double? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm telling you that uh, – no, not that guy. That guy's the guy who does – you know, is the kick uh, – the you know, the guy with the spurs. Oh, It's going to yes. be the person uh, – the person who has hands on Danielle at the end. Okay. But then he okay. gets headbutted. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Right. So, so basically Zhang and Griffith, they're going to lure the brothers here to kill them and all that and get rid of this damn problem because nobody can find out they killed the British official or else they're mm -hmm. sunk, right? So yep. he's on the loudspeaker, Griffith. Uh, he's a great, he's great in his role. I forget this actor's name. I know he's Griffith is the character, but he's got this rich, loud British voice and he's just mocking the brothers. You know, we've got Frankie and we've got Danielle and he reminds me. It's, he doesn't sound like him, but for some reason, I'm getting like a Robin Leach vibe out of this guy. Yes. Life Stoils of the Rich and Finest or whatever. Was that British? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. So now we get to one of my favorite scenes. It's where Van Damme and Moon meet. And they're going to yep. face off and fight. And also, at, uh, it, it's I think you put it in that intro that Ethan uses to introduce me on Kings, right? Yes. Let me uh, Tell me what you think of this fight while I look for that file real quick, please. Oh yeah, so um, this this fight you've got. First of all, do not ever kick a, a full drum with your leg; it will hurt you in trying to defend yourself. Just get out of the way. <laughs> right. Um, but this fight with Bolo Young was great on so many levels. Hail Admiral Wackass! I I Captain or I I Admiral, I should say. Um, and thank you. Hey, what's up, Primetime Bolton? Hey, congratulations on last night's big win over Tucci and Scala. The lazy boot is the most oh um is the most over uh move in the cg uh wrestling federation thank you I, so much prime time i we love appreciate that. you you Did are you the man it? and what a blast what a blast yeah that uh, was thank you what an honor to you as well um yeah it's yeah this this dude right here is uh so this was for anybody who was a massive fan of blood sport for anybody who um uh was a fan of, of, uh, of course, Enter the Dragon, where he got his stage name from. His character, Bolo, was the best advertising, wow. so he was started going by uh, Bolo. Uh, he was, was just an unbelievably, terrifyingly ripped person. And there is a <laughs> moment in this movie where, right after this, where he takes his, his shirt off, uh, the pecs do a dance, and then he flexes, and it, I swear to God, it looks like this dude... Is he looks like he was uh, just skin over muscle in that moment. It was Absolutely. pretty terrifying, yeah. you know. He looks like his uh, his jugular vein was about to pop. You know, it was yes. ridiculous. 
Yeah, and then they have a really great fight scene, a fun fight scene. Van Damme just shows off his kicks, and it was just a great homage to to their history with Bloodsport. He promised the guy, the guy when they were making Bloodsport, this is the story uh, that uh, that he tells, said, "If you ever make it big in the movies, will you cast me?" And so really? this was sort of a repayment, yes, for Bloodsport. He, he oh. said, "I want to hire him for this." I yep. didn't know that. I wanted to show people what you were talking about over on Breaking Rad, which is a great yep. comedy channel. That's me in the background with my Bronco sweater and my red uh, bandana. That's Sean there fighting Billy Tucci and Niall Scala. And we beat them on Breaking Rad as a wrestler. So I have this at double speed. Oh, but uh, you were doing some choke slam into the knee back breaker. And then yep. I do the lazy boot through the rope. And uh, we defeat Billy Tucci. I think I do it right here. And then we pin him. And it's over. Yeah, I do the lazy boot. <laughs> and I just ah. pin Billy Tucci. And, uh, you know, take his woman, take his money, take everything from him. So, uh, Billy Tucci, <laughs> you are now mine. But if you guys haven't checked out Breaking Rad, check that out. It's really awesome. It's really fun. They make Great characters channel. out of us, all the different CG personalities. And uh, I was honored to be in that. You guys truly are the best, most fun fans in the world. I didn't know I was going to be on it till like a day before. But last time yeah. I was on it, I think I fought Graham Nolan or something. And I actually made a hype video where I was talking trash. Um, I wish I could <laughs> find that. I don't know where I stuck that video. But I actually made a video. It's like, when I see you on Breaking Red, I'm going to shatter your little... Yeah, I don't know what I said, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's. This is the thing too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love this. This is a great boss fight. Um, you know, it's funny too because they were trying to save money. You know, because with settings, settings are tough. Right. So they had this fight, which was a really great fight. Bright lights. You know, Van Dam doing all the flashy sort of moves there. Um, and the thing about it is they also had the other fight. And by the way, guys. This is like when when I see actors or people talking about like, oh, you know, I'm going to go, you know, work out for this movie. And you you see people kind of balloon out or whatever. I think it was Henry Cavill who said it best. He goes, the action stars back in the day used to take like Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these guys used to take being in top form as their responsibility as a job right. requirement. And these yeah, guys, Van Damme in particular, always showed up ready, ready to film. Yeah. Van Damme, amazing physique, you know, yeah. he's uh, he started off doing ballet when he was little. It was a big thing in his life. So that mm -hmm. gave him a lot of great dexterity and nimble. That's why no one could do those jumping spin kicks the way he does. Yeah, you know, man. Just, no one could do that like him. Not Bruce Lee, not anyone. I think the greatest on-film martial artist of all time is Van Damme in his prime. No one yeah. – you can't name me one guy that looked cooler and better. Because on the Van Damme spin kicks, they just back the camera up. You get the shot. No wires, yeah. no BS. No quick edit, no zoom in to the foot. Like you see the spin kick, and it's amazing. So, yeah, it's a great thing. It is. Yeah, yeah, and that's oh, dude, seriously, right? what a great. So, so Moon, golly, he's so muscular. This guy, it's, it's ridiculous. And he he's coming at him with the barrel. Van Dam gives him the old kick. Uh, these are terrible pictures. I, I didn't get the extension. I was, but uh, and he ends up kicking him right into the electric, uh, right into this big electrical panel, and that's mm -hmm. how Moon. Uh, I wanted to come up with a moon pun, but I couldn't think. I was like a full moon. So I don't know. He gets fried, okay? I don't, can you think of a moon joke? I got the moon landing was faked. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he sent that moon into eclipse. No. There you go. <laughs> Jay Van Damme of a Ralph Macchio. You're kidding, right? <laughs> Hell, I, 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 uh, I started watching Cobra Kai season four like the other night. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never liked Ralph Macchio on that show. I like mm -hmm. the other guy, the Zabka guy that plays Johnny Lawrence. Yeah, he's great, man. Ralph Macchio is like a jerk on that show. He's always cranky. Yes. He's like got sand in his ass crack. He's just always yep. cranky on that show. I don't like it. I don't like it. So uh, I like Ralph Macchio in the movies from the 80s, but I think intentionally in the new show they make him the bad guy or whatever. Like he yes. has, he's always bitchy. It's his attitude. It's weird. I don't like it. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Sent the moon to the dark side. Hail Cranberry Langers. Well done. Wait a minute. What is shoot fight? I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Shoot. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin Cove. Young, that's, uh, uh, yeah, Zabka's in that Martin Cove. Yeah. That's Crease. I'm pretty sure Martin we Pope. um yeah, I'm pretty sure we we rented that on VHS when I was growing up in Chattanooga. Like there was there's a couple of movies that we watched 
and that we were super obsessed with. One of them was uh, a little bit more of an obscure martial arts film, which was, um, oh my God, what was it? Uh, shoot. So, oh God, it had Mantis in it. I forget. The Death Duel of the Mantis. Great <laughs> martial arts film. There was another one, Iron Monkey, we loved, of course. Sure. Uh, a classic. But then also we rented everything that Bolo Young was in. So we would go there and just see what movies has he done, you know? All right. Great stuff. Let's, let's see. I'm, I'm grabbing a little bit of this here. Hopefully uh -huh. that we won't get, uh, hopefully they won't like uh, take our show down. Let me, let me let this commercial pass real quick. But I just want people to see a little, see a little bit of this. I'll keep the sound off. Maybe that'll yes. help. And I'll turn the speed up. Oh, I think if you, if you turn the sound off, I don't think it will. I don't know. We, we can see, but if, as long as it's not a one to one, I'll just do a little. I'll just do a little yeah. bit of this. Uh, let me skip forward a little bit too. Hold on. I just want you guys to see some of these kicks. Okay. Um, from Such about a great here. Face. From yeah. about it. I mean, just look at how. There you go. <laughs> now I have this sped up, so hopefully YouTube doesn't like take us down when we're doing this. But uh, it's so good. It's so good, this fight. You guys got it. If you haven't seen this, do yourself a favor. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'll skip ahead here so we're not getting – but I want you to see some of the spin kicks. I think they're coming up. Oh, soon. yeah. They're great. Come on. Where is it? Oh, I think the spin kicks happen after the barrel. Yeah, yeah, The barrel's Oh, coming. yeah. Here it is. This is when he turns the tide. Right, right, right. So he charges him with the barrel to crush him, and then Van Damme just, just goes insane with the spins. Jumps him, of course, <laughs> and uh, tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, there fantastic. you go. Here it is. Here it is. Those. Boom. I mean, that's why this guy's a star. That's why he's a freaking star. No one does that on film. No, there no wires. That's real. Bang. No one does. Okay, I'm gonna take this down because I don't. I don't want to get popped. So but, uh, yeah. So this is the thing about it, right? We would just watch this stuff all of the time like we would go and watch these movies to be able to watch them now is awesome you can yeah. watch van damme on your phone life is good <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the way it is right so alex he, he finds uh danielle and he finds frankie down there in the ship but then the beauty herself Corey everson she comes down like out of the pipes and the wires and gets him around the neck with her thighs i didn't get a shot of it but we mm -hmm. all saw those thick thighs earlier um, she gets him. They, they, I think she's a beautiful woman. She is. I like a beak on a woman. I like a nose. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan when a lady's got a kind of, I was at, I hate the name drop, but I'm going to anyway, because it was a funny moment. And I don't mean to mention Dean King to mention, but it was just really funny. I was having dinner with him at the steakhouse. We were laughing and we got to talk about our preference in women. And uh, I told him I like the schnoz on a girl. And he looked mm -hmm. at me like, oh my God, you too. He's all, I love a big nose. And he told me when and all his friends know for years. So he says when they're out and there's a girl with a big, pretty nose, he, one of his friends wants home, dude, you're going to love her. She's got a hook. So, <laughs> <laughs> so That's uh, brilliant, man. I, I loved it. But uh, yeah, so I haven't met a lot of guys where they love the big nose, but I do. I you could have played She-Hulk is right, man. That, that yeah. is a crime. Seriously, Teflon Ron, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely a crime. I don't know what she looks like now. I'm sure she's pushing 60 now. I guarantee yeah. you she's still in shape. Of but, course. Uh, you know, um, probably too old to play the character. Oh, yeah. I mean, but back in the day, back in her prime, absolutely. Right. But uh, so anyway, he ends up beating Corey. I think he ends up stabbing her, right, with her own weapon. Like yes. She has played or something. And yeah. Uh, yeah, he ends up killing her. Poor thing. You could have, like, just talked to her to being a good guy and married her, dude. She's that pretty. Anyway. We're down by the docks. This just, this stuff is so delicious to me. The fights down by the docks on the cruise ships mm -hmm. or the container ships and the tractors and the cranes. And so they climb up this big crane tower. That it's I think it's the things that lift the giant semi trailers off the ships. Raymond Zhang, all you know, he scur scurries up this thing, and Alex goes after him. At the exact same time, Griffith has been chasing Danielle and Chad all over the dock, and. Mm -hmm. Chad jumps into the water, into the ocean right there in the harbor. He jumps into the water, and uh, Griffith is like, where are you? you got to come up for air sometime. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a brutal scene, I didn't get a shot of it, where Raymond Zhang's hand gets caught. Oh, in dude, in the gears. Ears, and Woo! they show it. They show yes. it. And you see the blood on his sleeve there. And this is your dark moment here, where 
Alex has been this bad, tough guy. I'll do it all myself. You know, chewing cigars, doesn't love anyone, screw the world. And this guy gives him the Darth Vader moment. Like, if you let me go, I'll split everything with you. We'll double cross your brother. We'll double cross Griffith. We'll everyone. And he's just like, he doesn't say no right off the bat. And you wonder if he's considering it or not. And then, uh-huh. you know, and they can, he's, but he's, you can tell he's mad. He has yep. the smolder. He has the rage burning in his eyes, you know, and he's just kind of yep. listening to Zhang plead for his life. Then, Cut back to this. He's looking down in the water. He can't find Van Damme anywhere. Well, the reason you can't find him is because he was behind you in the crane holding the container. He drops the container right on top of him. So that's the end of Griffith. Griffith is dead. And then Alex gives Zhang the uh, the swan dive off the crane. And uh, again, great lighting on this. I love love the lights they use to light this stuff up. Yeah. uh, What does he say, though, man? This This is annoying me. I'm trying to remember the quote. Hang on. You keep talking while while this goes. He right. says something. I'm trying to make sure I remember this correctly. Keep going. He does drop a 1990s uh, like Arnold style line on him there. I don't mm-hmm. remember it. Um, I'd have to go look it up or whatever. But yeah, Zhang falls. He hits some crates. Uh, Frankie and Danielle and Van Damme all reunite. The brothers face each other right there in front of the uh, a container. And we fade away to credits. Absolutely it's a, right. It's a great movie. It's peak Van Damme. He looks great. He moves great. It's just like full throttle action the whole time. You've got uh, the thing. I hate to admit this, but I'll just, I tell you guys the truth about myself. New 13, 14, 15 watching this. You got the booby scene. You remember 80s and 90s? There was always a meeting at a strip club or just for some reason you got to see boobs and you're only 15. And uh, I don't know. It, uh, Here you go, man. Oh, it what goes- do you got? This is the Alex moment right here. This is the Alex moment I was looking for. He goes, he's like, Alex, you're in with me. You'll get half of everything. And Alex says, everything? He goes, right there. And then the line he says is, what about my father? And And that's where you get that his dad, he has just processed that he never had a father because of this man. Right. And yeah. dang, from Alex, not from Chad, from Alex, that makes it brutal because you right. never see it from Alex. Right. Yeah, because Alex is always doesn't yeah, care. What do I do care? It myself. I I'm people. tough. I'm not scared of anyone. I'm a gangster in Hong Kong. What do I give a crap? And uh, yeah, you're right. He does process that trauma. And then he gives some new trauma to Zhang, you know, takes it, takes the trauma off his plate, puts it on Zhang's plate, says, hey, I've had enough. You finish this. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, and that's pretty much your movie. It's a uh, man. If it's you don't like dude. this, if you don't like this, you don't like movies. This is a dude, great, it's great, great movie. And you got to watch it with the boys, you know? Listen, the only thing better than a Van Damme hug is Van Damme hugging Van Damme. Right. All right, people. That's right. a beautiful thing. Right. Okay. Not to be underestimated. And this is, this is what it comes down to, too. Um, I've been thinking a lot about entertainment. I've been thinking a lot about the kind of stuff we see and the kind of of wonderful, I would love to say it's an innocence to these action movies, but I think it's more than that. I think it's a freedom of people to, to uh, you go into a movie theater and you see characters that do not seem like they're trying to lecture you. They don't seem constrained by the pettiness or the bureaucracy of your world. They go into these almost mythic stories that we took for granted at the time. We couldn't see that they were like the Westerns in so many ways of their days, the face-offs, the, the kind of, um, you know, the quality that they had. Martial arts, because of Bruce Lee, God bless him, um, with Enter the Dragon, really came to the States in a big way. And it took us a while to process what we were going to do with them. Not too long, but a little bit. And then we got this huge explosion of people who all admired Bruce Lee and grew up with the legend of Bruce Lee. And this is what's responsible for what you see in MMA. This is what's responsible for what you see here with Jean-Claude Van Damme. That is what it's about. You know? I, I, I think, you know, I was just at UFC 276. I, I mm-hmm. said that earlier. I love the fight game and all that. I think it's so good. You are, a, I'm a, I thought I was a big boxing fan. 
until I met you. You are a tremendous. I'm a, I'm a crazy big boxing yeah, fan. Yeah. Yeah. I love boxing. Not like you, but I totally love it. Sure, um, sure. Tyson Fury is my guy, by the way. But, yeah, he looks um, great. Yeah, him and Mayweather, my absolute favorites. But I do believe that Jean-Claude Van Damme is in a direct way, albeit small, responsible for the UFC existing. Because I really do think Bloodsport, Van Damme, all this stuff having that momentum and the zeitgeist, it gives you Street Fighter. It, and look at what Street Fighter and Bloodsport are. They're tournament fighters of people of dis different disciplines. What mm -hmm. is the UFC? It's a tournament fighter of people with different disciplines. And when the yes. UFC started, go on YouTube and search UFC 1. It's like a 400-pound like Samoan Hawaiian guy versus the skinny white dude that's like a karate kickboxer guy. So they were do and they weren't in the same weight class is my point. It was mm -hmm. like a tournament fighter of hey, let's see which uh which fight is better. You know, yeah. about which style is stronger, which was kind of not the main point of Street Fighter, but one of the interesting things. Because, you know, when you geek out with your buddies, you're yeah. kind of like, you're kind of like, well, I think karate is better than jujitsu or jujitsu is better than kung sure. fu or whatever. And I think that's a big aspect to it. But here's me Saturday night, my son, my nephew, my son wears glasses like me, my nephew. And if you can afford it, because it's not cheap, if you can get the UFC and watch this live, because I've seen it on pay-per-view a million times. If you yep. can be in the crowd and watch this live, dude, it is electric. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. I've been to NFL games, college football. UFC is insane. You know, because yeah. this is about violence. Football is tangentially about violence. This yep. is about nothing but violence. And the yeah. crowd, you can feel it in the crowd. People are keyed up. It, it is really an experience. A ton of fun. So that's it why is. I went Saturday. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, man. And, and you know what's sort of funny, too, is that something that people miss. The way that the video games... Uh, impacted this movie are certainly things like the barrels that are being rolled at Van Damme that he has to jump out of the way of the Frogger like jump from boat to boat with that side scrolling action. Right. There was a lot of that video game influence and hail Ignatz. You're absolutely right. There was right. a lot of that video game, you know, kind of excellence and sense of play in this that you just don't see very often. Right. You know, and inspiring you know and actually funny enough because you were just talking about boxing um let's see if i can get this on screen Maybe, i don't know if my phone's going to show up here but let's see here you got to angle uh, it a certain way so yeah, it'll see here. not be too bright so this right here okay is let's see if i can make this work here this right here is me judging uh i was one of three judges that was my side of the uh here we go that was my side of the fight, but I was judging a boxing match at my local gym. Oh, wow. So that's me with my clipboard doing my work. So, yeah, I'm big into boxing. A little <laughs> bit. A little Put bit. it mildly. It was fun. Yes. I think Ignatz, uh, yeah. does this mean he also UFC. likes the pies? No, it likes, and yeah, it likes the UFC, I think, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more into boxing than UFC. That's right. Evander Holyfield is a favorite for me. Yep. My right favorite boxer is Tyson Fury, and mm -hmm. uh, my second favorite boxer uh, currently. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone loves Iron Mike. To say Iron yep. Mike is your favorite is like saying you like chocolate. Everyone loves mm -hmm. Iron Mike. That's right. One of the, the greatest, to me, Iron Mike is the greatest, better than Muhammad Ali. Um, I don't know. I just think he's the greatest of all time. My other yeah. guy that I love is Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. his swagger because people are like, I don't like him. He brags. I'm like, you don't understand fighting. The bravado, yeah. selling the wolf tickets and all that stuff, that's part of the game. The smack yeah, talk, the press conference where they get in the fight, um, that's that's a huge part of the entertainment to me, you know? Yeah, I will tell you this. Uh, Rock Grin throwing down Buster Douglas, man. I will I will tell you this, though, and this is the thing about about um, Tyson Fury that, that people need to get about things. When you're looking out into – People try to sell you on this propaganda of nihilism and stupidity and all that other, you know, idiocy. Remember this and don't forget it because it is the most important thing is that when Tyson Fury was born premature, um, his traveler father, this is his background is he's a traveler, a gypsy. Um, but travel uh, his his father, <laughs> because they were worried he was going to die, named him Tyson after Mike Tyson. Right. Because they want to be strong. When people think that I feel sad for people who have never had heroes.
here they can have look like them. You're right. watching two guys for whom Jean-Claude Van Damme was a hero. He was right. a Belgium born and raised guy who came to Hollywood to try to make his career as an action star with, I believe it was a Hong Kong film company, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, I don't know where they were all out of, but this is the thing people don't understand. Yeah, Loma's great, man. The Matrix is great. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's Loma looked really good too in his last fight. But this is the thing, you know, you got Vasily Lomachenko, you've got all of these guys, right? And the thing about film is looking good on film when you're fighting is very difficult. Yeah. Big challenges is to show something great, you know? And so that's the whole thing for me, you know? Yeah. yeah Barthley Gorman is, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is his grandpa too, right? Yes. Um, either Jack Dempsey. Oh, God, don't do that. Yeah, that's true. So I have a picture of uh, I had a picture of Jack Dempsey, a bl old black and white of Jack Dempsey in my uh, in my illustration studio. Um, I also had, um, but oh man, man, you can't go Willie Willie Pep, man. You can't go wrong with Willie Pep. Sorry, like for me, Willie Pep is he's one of the 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 people who would put on a clinic and is a huge influence on Mayweather and his right. his style to me. So yeah, Willie Pep's amazing. I wanted to get into this topic here because I brought up. Yep. Mayweather and some people hate him because he just talks so much he's got so much swag and I tell you I'm in Vegas all the time I think I was there 10 times last year I've been there four or five times this year I just got back yesterday morning from Vegas or two days ago and um or maybe it was yesterday I don't remember <laughs> but this sign here TMT that's Floyd Mayweather's company the money team the money team that, that billboard right there it's not up anymore it was up for years before COVID, and he would update it. And whenever he mm -hmm. would win, they would change the number on it. So w before you get to Las Vegas, you, you could see the strip as you drive up. That sign would be up, and I thought it was the most badass thing ever. It is. Because like, he lives in Henderson, which is outside of Vegas to the southeast. And um, he's telling you, you're coming yes. to my town, and I've never fucking lost. So don't even think about it. Yeah. Like. Who spends money on a billboard to just tell everyone, hey, I'm 50 and I'll buy the way in case you didn't hear. And yeah. I just love that kind of swagger. And I want to get your take on it because I think in the culture war, mm -hmm. I think there is a time to fight. There is a time where you cuss at people and then fighting is ugly. You know, fighting is, it's mean. It is mean. But I yeah. think it's justified when if someone is attacking someone, like say you're, God forbid, you're walking down the street and someone is on top of someone, would you not push that person off or would you be like hey man we really need to talk this out what if they were just beating the crap i'm now i'm not giving legal advice but you get my point that like sure there's a, there's a point where you're being attacked and self-defense yeah. is legal you know what i mean so mm -hmm. i when i think about swagger and being aggressive and being mean i i sometimes get sick of my friends on the conservative anti-woke side that we're on we're like oh i don't want to stoop to their level and i don't want to be mean to them and i'm like they're literally ruining lives like right now. They're yes. Asking, do you want to, do you want to reason with these people? Look at them. Look how they act. Do they seem reasonable? What do you think of aggression and stuff like this? 50 and 0 talking big. What do you think? Cause I love it. Well, listen, um, I always say this, uh, that, that one of the things for, for anybody who's been in fights, one of the things that you learn really quickly is how to size up people. And so I've been I've been out places. It was just a habit of mine for a while. I'm getting better at it because I just don't want to think about that kind of. Oh no, we can't hear you. You're robotic. Can you hear me? Because I can't hear you at all. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, but your video froze and we couldn't hear you. All right, hang on a second. And but she was talking to me. Let me see if I. Maybe you got to jump out and jump back in. I will. Hang on. Yeah, jump out and come back. All right, guys. Well, that's a show. No, just kidding. He'll be back in a second. We're having technical difficulties with his internet connection. But yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see in the comments what you guys think. Because I know there's a line. You don't want to stoop to the level and then become a monster yourself. But I do think you have to understand, like, I have a family member. And they were literally being bullied and picked on at work. And they came to me crying. And telling me how this person was doing this to them and that to them and going to steal their promotion and get them in trouble. And it really was like evil what this coworker was doing. And yeah. through the tears, I looked at him. I said, 
you're in a fight. Do you understand that? And they didn't understand it because they were a very nice, peaceful person. I said, you need to fight back. Now, that doesn't mean go slash their tires or do something stupid illegal, but it does mean set boundaries, set lines, go talk to HR, whatever the proper rules are. But it does mean to defend yourself and not just, oh, if I cry hard enough, they'll go away. Because I do see people in the culture war versus the SUWs. They think, well, if I'm just, if I comport myself with silence, then they'll go away. And it's like, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I think I think Khabib has a good strategy. You know, I mean, Khabib. Explain. When you think about, well, okay, so Khabib shows how disciplined he is, and he fights everybody. And when my favorite thing about Khabib, when he would talk to his opponents, is when he was, he, I forget who it was, he was whose head he was bashing in and had him on the ground, it was grounded pound with him, and he goes, um, "Come on, you know, tap out. You know, I deserve this." <laughs> because you know I deserve that's the most terrifying thing. And when he had Connor and he's like, You wanna talk? Let's talk now. Right. You wanna talk? And so sometimes I think this is this is the thing about it, right? Um and and this is this is the thing. I if you have a realistic understanding of your opposition and how dangerous you are, that is always wise. You know, I'm pretty sure that's in the art of war, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Um is but this is the other thing too, right? We can be excellent. The easiest thing in the world with these people and the biggest thing that's Floyd's secret that people don't talk about, and and this comes again from that Zab Judah quote. I quote it all the time because I keep it in my head. Goes, They said, Zab, what's Floyd Mayweather's secret? You fought him, and you you got him to touch his glove with the canvas. You're one of the people who've had the most success against Floyd at that point in your career um, before the low blow and all that insanity. Right. Um, and he goes, so what's his secret? And he goes, Floyd trains like he's broke. Right. And I'm telling you this, guys. The way that we beat these guys is, let me tell you this. Let's talk about this for a second. Where are the SJW um, on that side of the culture war? Where are their live streams right now? Oh, they can't do them. They well, don't like the thing. fans. They're, they're narcissists. They're better than everyone. They would never treat a fan like an equal. But here's the other one. It's a lot of work. Now, going through somebody's Twitter feed as a Twinkie dissolves in your mouth, staring at your computer screen, laying in your bed, and trying to find, you know, typing up some missive about how this person is, you know, got to be canceled, is a lot more different than actually getting to spend time with people and making a quality product. Not about, like, how much you do. Like, when people talk about this, man, I just saw someone at was uh, mentioned, uh, your boy Zach, in the chat, right? Like when I see uh, Aaron L. Fetchy's artwork it's right now, it is amazing. The rat armor he designed on those news. I don't know. Do we have any Aaron L. Put some ones in the chat if you like, uh, you know, Aaron, uh, Aaron L. Fetchy's stuff. If you're a fan of that work. I think that work gets better and better and better. It's beautiful stuff. Then you go and look at the, the imaginative creativity of Gabe as – Every aspect of art that he does, when you see something like b when I'm sitting down to do Nosfero, which, by the way, guys, we have a brand new stretch goal for Nosfero. Don't have to pull it up there. I'm going to just say it. Keep it on Aaron's stuff and, and your boy Zach's campaign, which uh, which I back. I do want a Twinkie, old dirty fatty. I'm not going to lie. All right, look. Uh, it's But look at Aaron Alfecci's work. Give me a one if you, you know, get on that, man. That is beautiful. Gorgeous. And this is the thing, guys. We... We are as strong as the people we collaborate with. And I wouldn't collaborate with just anybody or, uh, you know, artistically. And that even goes for on these shows. Gabe is the first person I started doing a show with. That's the what? truth. Because we, we're kindred spirits and we love all of this stuff. But um, no Sparrow, there's a new stretch goal, a 30K stretch goal, which is um, to get Eric Weathers to be doing the lettering on oh. that book, right? And so when I look at this stuff, it's all about the quality, guys. It's all about the quality. They don't want to do that kind of work. And by the way, people with skill like to be friends with other people with skill, hard work, and discipline. Their problem is they're self-selecting. They pick people around them who don't make them insecure. And when you're so miserable and so negative and so unskilled, you have to surround yourself with a bunch of other drips. Right. That's all you've got. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's absolutely. just, I mean, good God, man. Yeah. You know? 
it's their their work, their mentality, and their approach to life is so flaccid. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, like, yeah, there's something to this. <clears throat> He's saying uh, the Ragu Overlord. In some ways, we won. SUW said has become internet ridicule. Anti SUWs are low energy cringe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, there's something to be said to be going too far and spending all day fighting with these people. Sure. But I do think if someone, you know, has their hand on your neck, it's okay yeah. to get it and pull it off. That's all right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you got to be calculated. You got to be smart. Self defense is always justified, even legally, but especially morally. I'm not yeah. a lawyer. Don't take legal advice from me. Yeah. So, Daily Wire makes movies. CG books will get turned into movies. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that, dude. Oh, phone call I had today. I'll tell you after the show, Sean. All right. Well, it's like we'll be having some fun. Oh, my gosh. I won't yeah, say man. anything else about that. But uh, phone call I had today. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But uh, I, I want to <laughs> oh, share this because I wanted to get your opinion on it. Yes. So Terrell Owens, um, I believe he was on the Cowboys. He was on the 49ers. He was on different teams. And when they, or they were bitter, bitter rivals of the Cowboys. And back in the late 90s, early 2000s, he scored a few touchdowns. And every time he scored, he would run to the 50-yard line and slam the ball on the star. Mm -hmm. And a couple of my friends and my brother were so mad. and He's classless and blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, I believe in it. I believe that the psychological warfare is part of the warfare. And if you can anger yeah. your opponent, get them off kilter, and demoralize them, all the better. You don't have to mean these things to do them. If you do them, mm -hmm. they can throw them off. Do you think, because they're like, oh, it's not classy, it's not classy. And I'm just like, who cares? It's war. Who cares? This is not a, a classy contest. Am I wrong? What is your true opinion? Oh my gosh. Uh, I guess what is that thing? You know, it's, it's not bragging if you can back it up. <laughs> do, do, do you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, right. the, the, the problem with doing any of this stuff is if you find yourself getting knocked out, right? <laughs> if you find yourself getting destroyed. So this is the thing I keep, you know, coming back to guys. And, and I, we talked about your boy, Zach on, um, on last night's stream, you got, you know, lots of pros, lots of cons, but I'm not here to speak to that per se. That's not the thing I'm talking about. This is the thing I want us to notice when we look at Aaron L. Fetchy's artwork and we look at this stuff, the simple argument that someone from outside the industry who was critiquing comics, that's all he was known for said, they said to him the most, you know, whatever, uh, pretentious, out there thing you could say to somebody and it was to um check him hard they said if you think you know so much why don't you make a comic book this is how comic skate as we know it as a publishing empire this is how we got here and he what? said yeah get, get that ass yeah you don't want to get knocked out that's right um and it's it's one of those things where um you said you know he said this he goes he goes all right i'm gonna do it so then when he tried to do it and he found a small publisher they said they went and they interfered with that then he tried to go to Kickstarter. They interfered with that. Right. Then he went to Indiegogo, and finally he funds this book. And in funding this book, him and John Malin, in funding this book, created an environment where it could be done. Not only that, they did exactly what they set out to do. And now Comicsgate, as you know it, is producing comic books that are, this was their case, if you think you can do better, do better. And we have. You guys right. are the proof. And we have better fans. We have better artwork. And our, our walk, you know, our strut, so to speak, is when we put our artwork out there and we have these great entertaining and fun conversations with you guys. Right. And the fact that we can have at various points during our shows, 60 people watching simultaneously, 100, 1,000 people watching simultaneously on some of the bigger streams. You've right. got campaigns that have made it like Eric Weathers over, you know, six figures and many more like Frega's campaign, Ethan's campaigns. All of these different John Malin's campaigns, for heaven's sake. Can't wait for Godlike. I've got a piece in the Visions book. I think you do too, right, Gabe? Do you have no, one in the Visions book? Uh, he, he, invited the... Me, he invited yeah. me to do a piece, but I don't want any of my characters published in another book. Debut, book yeah. In my... Yeah, I did someone else's, right. So, so I didn't. Yeah, yeah. But he did invite me. Yeah, he's, so. a, he's John's such a great guy, man. Yeah. And, and it's like we were, you think about all this stuff, right? We are crushing it. Your boy Zach just got to 100K in less than 48 hours right. on his campaign. This is the stuff they said we couldn't do. 
The problem when someone like, dare I say, one of my favorite entertaining fighters, Nassim Ahmed, says, I ain't going to get beat. And then Barrera beats him from pillar to post. It's hard to come back from that. You know what I mean? So you really got to be on it. What we say is we can do it better than you, and then we show it. And they nitpick us, but they don't question the central premise. They say things like, well, you know, Ethan's book is late. They love to say that one. And it's kind of like, your book is on time and it's shit. (laughs) Or more accurately, your book is late and it's shit, which is actually the case more often than not. As someone that did a better part of two decades in the mainstream, uh, every single book is running late and it's just a failure of leadership. Every single Aquaman, Justice League, everything we're working on, we are trying to get it in. By the, they call it the drop dead. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, that's the drop dead date that we have to have all the files in uh, right for, for the editorial so they get it to the printer. Here's a little game they would play, though. Um, they didn't need the book till Thursday, but they would tell you the drop dead was Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're always mm-hmm. trying to pad it for themselves. So but, you I don't know. know. It's, it's, yeah, the psychological aspect is part of the war. Yeah, I mean, and I do think that... Um, I think it's the biggest part of the war. If you defeat someone's mind, you don't have to defeat their body. And I think, you know what's so funny is? The, the, the kind of pompousness that I think we all react negatively to is the one where you get the sense that the person doesn't believe it themselves. Well, Not the one where you think they do. Do you get what I mean? Well, like when somebody is like, you know, hey, man, I could kick your ass. I don't think I've ever said to anyone I could kick your ass in my life. I've said, you want to fucking fight. <laughs> it doesn't always go well, but it happens. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like it's it's you you. It's just it's such a funny thing to me. Like I meet a lot of people who have never been in fights. Just because you've been in fights doesn't mean you won the fight, but it means you're willing to take the next one and the next one. I love yeah. that's why I love Captain America when he's like in the first movie was like, I can do this all day. Right. That's the guy you want. It's the fight and the dog. And in comics, my God, it's the fight and the fans and it's the fight and the artists that make this whole thing work. It's that we get to we could be we're sitting here talking about Jean-Claude Van Damme and these people are the weirdos who are sitting back going, why are you talking about this? And it's like, go talk about your own thing. Do you have anything that's not a commentary on us? Right. Is there a single independent comics movement happening right now that you've heard of? Yeah. No, we are it. Comics gate is the only one, right? Yeah. If we're and the it, worst comics just- movement you have ever heard of, we at least you've heard of us. Sorry, right. go and, ahead. No, and well, it is. It's the only one that's doing anything right now. And it isn't just us, the guys that make the comics. Mm-hmm. It's just as much you guys, the fans supporting us. That's we right. are, I mean, look at that, guys. We're $33 away from $65,000. Yes. Who wants to do it? Just that's one, right, one guys. person buys a, a one book, we'll, one book. We'll jump over 65. I, I say, what are, you, what are you out there? Hail, real I need, you, I need you to do it. Come through. Yeah, Give guys. us 65 tonight. Yeah. Backer and we kick truth, justice, American way. We've just celebrated the Fourth of July. We've just celebrated our Independence Day here in this country, and this is it, man. Like one more backer, we kick this thing to 65k. Is there anyone in the chat who would like to back an extra cow? I backed all three covers of this book myself. Anybody who wants to weigh in, let us know your backer number if you do. If you back this book, let us know what backer number you are. Yeah. Um, because that would put us at 65 and that'd be a hell of a yeah. way to close out this stream, man. Hell yeah. of a way. You guys uh, are you guys are the best. Yeah. Ragu Overlord says comics gate is image comics when it started. I agree. I, I mean the political discourse is a little bit different, but I was there, I was 13, 14 years old when image kicked yeah. off, and there was a lot of hate from the mainstream. You know yeah. what I mean? There was they're not gonna make it. And there were I remember Peter David, he's a writer, he's still around, he's a good writer. But he like mm-hmm. he had debates with Todd McFarlane at a few yeah. conventions. Find them on YouTube; they're amazing. Todd McFarlane yeah. shows up, I think, shirtless with like a headband and a towel, like he's mm-hmm. ready to fight. And they yep. have a debate because the argument from Peter David and some of the other writers was writers are what make comics. You guys, yes. Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Valentino, Eric Larson, you're just all stupid artists. You know how to draw, but you don't know how to write magical words of wisdom like me. So they would debate about stuff like that. So there was. It wasn't political, but there was still strife then because I think yeah. people like conformity. You know, I yes. saw a video of like, if you face the back wall on an elevator, everyone that comes in after you will face the back wall. 
people mm-hmm. don't like confrontation because people, you know, a lot of times they give in to cowardice. And I think when you buck the trends, when you go yep. outside of the status quo and say, you know what? I don't think the yep. earth is flat. I think you can sail a boat around it and get to India a different way. Yep. You discover the new world for the Europeans. Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, you could change things only if you question things. If you think you know everything in 2022 and that our scientific and philosophical knowledge is at the zenith, it can get yes. no higher. That is hubris and it's ignorant. So I do think, yeah, when you challenge and say, you know what, mainstream Marvel DC, I'm going to leave because I don't like yes. what you guys are up to and I'm going to try a better way. That's what I told them. Sean said that to academia. Yep. He was there for almost two decades and he said, you know what? Yep. I got a better idea. What you guys are doing, I don't think it's working. Yeah. And, uh, and you fans, by supporting us, you're in the deal with us too. It's a handshake agreement. Like, you know what? We're going to yep. try something bold and different. And guys, as a, a little nine-year-old Anakin said in The Phantom Menace, Mm-hmm. it's working yeah that's absolutely <laughs> right man and it's too true we build this brick by brick page by page panel by panel fan by fan that is how we do it backer right. by backer we break through these barriers when you see a book hit six figures and that is becoming a much more common occurrence you start to see the excellence there you go it's working yeah there you go man <laughs> But you see that whole that whole thing that we're doing, right? It's it's we move these things bit by bit, and we slowly get to the 65k, the 70k. In my case, it's we shooting for 30k, and then we're there, right? You know, 30k, and then we got Eric Weathers, frankly the best letterer in the business right now. Amazing guy will be lettering Nosferatu the Crypt Walker. Yeah, and he's I, like a, a triple quadruple threat, isn't he? He like, is. He, he does. Dude, all he can paint of- too. Brilliant. Oh, really? Yeah, he does uh, beautiful digital paintings and portraits. I mean, he did a, 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 a Richard Attenborough from Jurassic Park painting that was gorgeous. Uh, beautiful really? digital painting. Yeah, he's so good. Um, I'll have, I'll have yeah, I mean, it's so good, dude. It's on his art station. And okay. it, it's and this is the thing, right? And by the way, I want to say I love you backers because the other night Eric Weathers said, come on, guys, shout us at 419. Where are all of our reefer loving uh, comic skaters to make sure he gets to 420? And you guys made it happen. <laughs> this is freaking great, oh, guys. That's, that's you guys funny. are the best. That's too funny. Yeah, well, um, let's see. Let's just have a little recap here. Uh, yes. I think it's a show. We've been going over two hours. Right on. Double uh, Van Dam Double Impact is the namesake of this mm-hmm. show. I do with right my on. brother from another mother, Shanta Jetty. And uh, I think it is Van Dam's absolute best. Right on. It's peak 80s. It's a 1991 film, I believe. Yeah. But when it comes to 80s and 90s action, Chinese mafia, battles down by the docks, drug lords, all that, this movie, I think, is the culmination of what all of that was leading to. Yes. Everything that everything that uh, Stallone and, and uh, Lone Wolf McQuaid himself, you know what I mean, and... Uh, what was uh, his, his real name is uh, Charles Bronson is a stage owner. Yeah. Wasn't that like Buczynski or something like that? Yeah. Everything they did, even going back to uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all this machismo, I think it sort of peaks right here. Like this is like the end of that algorithm, you know? I don't yeah. know. I'm just kind of being weird about it. But to, at least to me, at least Dude, to me, this is the peak of it, you know? Yeah. You this is Because you get the is... craziness and you get the fun, but you get the badass action. I don't know. Yeah, it's the nexus of cool and that kind of um, kinetic, fun, and joy movie. That's that's what it is. And the joyless film is something that we have too many of right now. This is a film that's all about joy, action, a sense of play, and a sense of spontaneity. And it just so happens it does everything that movies talk about aspiring to do you know, today, like, you know, strong female character. Well, we've got that, right? Like we've got all of these different things. We've got different kinds of people. We've got different actors. And there you go, guys. There's uh, what started off there. Double impact, everyone. That's Thank right. you guys for being here. Yeah. We appreciate absolutely. it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys. Well, uh, check out Nosfero. Check out Truth, Justice, American Way. We need right one on. back and we'll be at 65,000. And then uh, we'll get Sean up to what was it to get Eric Weathers? 30,000, 30K. Okay. And then we are at Eric Weather's letter in the book. And I just okay. I want to I want to collaborate with Eric, man. All right. Hail Admiral. All Hail right. well, make sure you uh you like this. Wrong. Make sure you're subscribed. 
And I just thank you all so much for being here. What movie? Now, we were going to do Iron Eagle, and I called the Audible just because yeah. I don't know why. I just wasn't feeling it. I went to go watch it the other day, and I was just like, I don't know. I had to buy it. I couldn't rent it. We could do Above the Law. Teflon Ron dropped Above the Law in the chat. We haven't done that one yet. We've never done Above the Law? We haven't done Above the Law. I've shown the poster like 800 times. I know. I think it's time. Above the Nico. Law. Above the Law, folks. Above the Law, July 13th. 7 p.m. Pacific. Be here, guys. We'll see you next week, okay? <laughs> Absolutely.